Florida Tech men's soccer is on the air tonight from Rick Stoller Field on the campus of Florida Tech. It's another Sunshine State Conference matchup as the Tampa Spartans visit the Florida Tech Panthers. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. J.C. Myles with you on the Panther website, floridatechsports.com, along the Florida Tech Sports Network. Uh, Forrest Fager is going to join me on uh, color commentary in just a moment, but let's, uh, let's set the scene for this one as uh, Florida Tech comes in with a uh, overall record of 9-3. and three. They are 5-3. and three. In the Sunshine State Conference, that puts them in uh, fourth place. But they're uh, knocking on the door of uh, the uh, spots above them, which include uh, second and third place. Uh, Florida Tech only has two more games left, and they have to capitalize if they want to move up the uh, standings and possibly get a first-round home playoff game for the uh, Sunshine State Conference tournament. And they could certainly take a big step tonight if they defeat Tampa. The Panthers are one point behind Barry, and they're three points behind Florida Southern and Nova. The uh, Panthers coming in playing some pretty good soccer. They've won four of their last five, but their last game was a losing effort, a, a tough loss to Lynn, which has snapped their four-game losing streak. They lost to the uh, Lynn Fighting Knights 2-1 uh, to one on the road. And for Tampa, they had a wonderful season last year. They were 9-4-3 and three overall, 6-2-2 two and two in the conference. They were in second place by uh, Palm Beach Atlantic, but uh, struggling this year and uh, one of the reasons is they've uh, had a bunch of players hurt. Uh, they're two, they're two seven and three overall, and they're uh, two six and one in the uh, Sunshine State uh, Conference. Uh, and uh, Tampa's already been eliminated from the uh, tournament, so uh, they're playing for pride in their last uh, couple of games. Uh, Tampa's been going in the opposite direction of late. They've lost five of their last six, and uh, again, they only have two wins this year. They defeated Eckert on the road two to one. And they also won in double overtime up in Daytona Beach against Embry Riddle, winning that one by the score of three to two. And uh, one problem is uh, last year they were very good in one goal games. They were three and one, and this year in one goal games they're actually two and seven. So all three, all um, all their results, uh, not including the three ties that they've had, have been all one goal games. And again, they're two and seven in uh, those games. So, again, uh, big game tonight, and as I bring in Forrest Fegert, uh, well, Forrest, you look at the standings. Palm Beach Atlantic and Lynn are tied for first. Uh, Florida Southern and Nova are tied for second. Uh, Barry is in third, and I guess we're in fourth. Kind of a log jam with the standings, and I guess that's really nothing out of the ordinary in our conference. Anybody can beat anybody, and the, uh, the uh, standings are really uh, bunched up. That's right, and one thing that I think is a little bit out of the ordinary is how – competitive you have to be just to get into the tournament right so florida tech has to have more than 15 points in order to make the tournament so uh, i feel like that's on the higher side and sometimes you get teams squeaking in with 12 points or around that uh that number but this this season is taking the most in order to get in well i think realistically for florida tech they want to get up to either third or fourth place it looks like first and second place is just uh out of the question, but um, again, they have the tiebreaker advantage over Florida Southern. They don't against Nova, but again, the uh, top two teams of the conference get a first round bye, and then the third seed plays the six, and the fourth seed plays the five. So you want to get to uh, third or fourth place, and uh, you know it's always nice to get that first round home game. Oh yeah, and uh, the potential matchups for Florida Tech, uh, assuming they get that one more point needed in order to get into the conference, would be. Uh, Nova, Barry, or Florida Southern. Florida Southern, of course, in Lakeland, in the middle of the state, it'll be, uh, you know, muggy, hotter, worse weather. And Barry and Nova, that's a long drive for, yeah. uh, for a road game, and uh, those teams usually play well at home. So Yeah, so we're going to have to get ahead of Nova so we don't end up in a tie with them. We'd rather have them come all the way up here instead of us going uh, that's right, all yeah. the way down there. So, well, I guess, yeah, you've got it to uh, – You've got to figure it out pretty well. So, I mean, it looks like, yeah, either Florida Southern, Nova, or Barry would be a first-round opponent for Florida Tech. So, if Florida Tech, I guess, ties tonight, they're officially in the tournament in some capacity. That's right, yeah, because they've played eight games. Rollins is only three points back, but they've played nine games. Their only remaining game is on Tuesday against us. Right. So, if we get that one more point, we'd be on 16. The best they could finish with is 15 points. 
So, again, Florida Tech coming off the tough uh, 2-1 to loss to Lynn. And actually, Tampa, uh, they've been off the entire week. And their last game was against Lynn last Saturday. And they lost to Lynn uh, 3-2 to in overtime. So, But I don't know what it is with us against uh, Lynn and Palm Beach Atlantic. I mean, Lynn and Palm Beach Atlantic, I think, are the cream of the crop in the conference. And uh, both these teams have come so close to beating Lynn, at least. And, and we played pretty well against Palm Beach Atlantic. I think we lost uh, by one goal. Uh, yeah, that's right. It was three to two yeah. in the game uh, in at Palm Beach Atlantic, and like you said, those are just those are the two strongest teams, and uh, you got to bring your A plus game to beat them, especially on their turf. So we should have a a, a good one tonight. Um, All time series, Tampa has a big advantage. They've won thirty five times. Florida Tech has won fifteen times, and there have been five ties. Um, Tampa's won the last three in the uh, series. The last Florida Tech win was actually over in Tampa, uh, one to nothing. That was back in 2014. Uh, Tampa's also won uh, five of the last ten with uh, three Florida Tech wins and two ties. Uh, last uh, year over in Tampa, Tampa won the game uh, three to two. Uh, Felipe D'Souza, who has graduated at two goals, so Florida Tech is probably happy he's not back for uh, another oh, yeah. season. And the uh, Panthers got goals by the departed Josh Thomas and the current uh, Solomon Wheatley. So, so pretty close game last year, and uh, we're expecting probably a pretty close uh, game tonight. Well, uh, tonight's senior night. Of course, you experienced a senior night. Oh, yeah. During yeah. your senior year. A while so, back. Um, That's right. Uh, we only had three who are being recognized um, tonight. Um, let me see here if I can find it. Uh, uh, Daniel Soprano told me, and I've already forgotten. Uh, well, Paris Jr. Rosary, he's, he is, he's a senior out of Mississauga, Ontario. This is his last uh, regular season home game. So do they recognize the grad students for uh, for senior night as well? Because well, I saw, I thought I saw Tatfuma DeMeiro uh, over there getting recognized and a couple yeah, of the other uh, graduate you know students. Tatfuma is another one. He will mm -hmm. not be coming back next year now academically i guess some of these people are not uh, totally finished with school after uh, season, but okay. i was told there are only three so tapfuma along with uh paris jr rosary and there's one other so uh hmm. trying to remember who it is but anyway we wish uh the departing players uh best wishes in their future endeavors so again se senior night tonight I'll tell you, it seems like another hot, sticky night. Where's that breeze that we usually get? Yeah, actually, the weather said it would be a... Uh, this is supposed to be the middle of a cold front for us, and it's about 80-something yeah. 80 80 degrees. Yeah, and yeah. The cold front must be somewhere else. That's right, yeah. So. And we might have been duped on that one. So, again, uh, Florida Tech comes in winning four of their last five, and, again, Tampa comes in losing five of their last six. Again, uh, Tampa won the tournament last year. They made the NCAA tournament. They lost to West Alabama in the uh, first round, 5-1. Uh, to one, But uh, they're not even going to make the Sunshine State Conference tournament. They, they've always had very good teams. They've had um, three national titles in their history. So, I mean, very good pedigree for this uh, program. But, again, this year it seems like it's mostly injuries that have derailed them. Yeah, injuries. And, you know, like I said, I said this in the beginning of the year, this is a very competitive conference. And once you start losing a couple of those one-goal games, you know, uh, it can snowball on you, and you can start to lose a little confidence and get a little bit tighter when you go down a goal again. And uh, it seems like that might be something that's happened with these guys. Well, again, they were 3-1 and one in one-goal games last year, and this year uh, all the games that have been decided, you know, not including the ties, uh, have been decided by one goal, and they're 2-7. and seven. And, again, they're 2-7-3 and three overall, so... Yep, but they like did, they did get the two one goal wins against Eckerd and uh, Embry Riddle, but they lost all the others. Yeah, and just an unbelievably like if moral victories counted for anything, they've ha they'd have plenty of them against the number five team in the country. Two one loss in overtime. That was Palm Beach Atlantic against Florida Southern when they were undefeated, number nine in the country, lost one zero, and then another loss against Lynn three two in overtime when they were the number eleven team in the country. So. They're playing really, really competitive soccer. They're just not able to edge teams out at the end of games. I'll tell you, that Florida Southern win by us on the road, 4 nothing. that that might be our most impressive uh, win of the year because Florida Southern was ranked, and that really shot them 
down the polls. In fact, uh, Florida Southern is still receiving votes in the latest national poll. Uh, Palm Beach Atlantic third in the country. Florida Tech comes in at number 15. Uh, Barry at 19 and Nova at 23. And then, you know, it's really hard to believe. Linda's in second place in our conference. They're just receiving votes. They're not even in the top 24, but we know how good they are. Oh, yeah. I think uh, they haven't counted the win that Lynn had er earlier in the week against Florida Tech yet. So once the rankings reset, right. uh, you know, uh, assuming Nova – or assuming Lynn does well in their next game, they'll probably shoot up the rankings I, at I that think point. So. I mean, yeah. they're, they're a very good club, obviously. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's do the starters. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll do Tampa's if you want to do Florida Tech. So let me uh, just run down Tampa's real quick. Uh, their starting goalkeeper from Bedworth, England, is Jake Richards, and uh, Richards has played every minute of every game. So um, that is one player Tampa doesn't want to get hurt. Uh, Ramsey Torre is also starting along with uh, Knut Soren Hovet. Uh, Julius Becker, also Till Newman, I think was injured. Hadn't played the last two or three games, but he's starting tonight. Uh, one of my favorite names, Juancho Fernandez, who's actually from uh, Oviedo, Spain. I'm going to talk about Oviedo a little bit later on. I was in Spain in 1982. That was one of the places I stayed at along with some other uh, students. Northern part of Spain, great uh, part of uh, Spain. Uh, Tony Soler, uh, Soler is starting for uh, Tampa. Also Joey Baiza. The actual spelling on his name is B-A-J-Z-U. Okay, we got our national anthem. We'll be right back. All right, our national anthem from Rick Stoller Field. Just completing the lineups for temp Tampa. I mentioned uh, Joey Biza, who spells his name B-A-J-Z-U, but it's pronounced Biza. Also, Jan Walker, uh, Marcel Salocad, who's one of their big goal scorers. He leads the team with six. He's actually a graduate student from Germany. And then Ezrick Nichols is starting for Tampa. And you want to run down our starters? Yeah, I'll rattle them off really quickly. In goal, we got Jason Fesque in defense. Morgan Gautier, uh, Tatfuma Demero, Mikel Roisland, Erland Eichland. In the midfield, Hugo Lopez, number seven. Guillermo Marcos, number eight. Uh, Sol Wheatley, the captain. Um, and uh, Luca Campanini. Uh, and up top, we've got Guillermo Marcos and Perrin Ricknag, of course, the uh, leading scorer right now for Florida Tech. The big guy. The big uh, man. That's right. Uh, I believe he's tied for most goals in the conference with 10, mm -hmm. and he's second or third in points. So the big guy, Perenrick Nag, having a uh, tremendous year. Well, it's interesting, you know, I, I think Robin Chan considers the fact that he has two number one goalkeepers because uh, Imeric Barold Catello has started seven games this year, and Jason Fesque is starting his sixth. So those two have been not quite even in uh, time of minutes, but in uh, games played. I mean, Catello comes in 618 minutes and Fesque uh, 447. So, you know, it's nice to have two number one goal goalies. That's right, and they both performed extremely well. It's not uh, – it's there's a old saying in uh, football where if you have two starting quarterbacks, you've really got none. Uh, for Robin Chan, he's got two starting goalies, and they're both 
very, very strong players. I mean, it's kind of tough to pick for him every game. How I mean, who's he going to go with? That's right. So. Yeah, but you know, whoever he's picked, they've done well, and it's they seem to stay ready and positive. So, uh, good job from the players and good job from the coaches. Yeah, again, Florida Tech at nine and three, and again, all their uh, all their um, losses have been in conference, which is unfortunate. They're five and three in conference, so we're underway as this one is. Uh, Chipped ahead to the Panther end. They get it up to midfield. Nag with a header. And it comes to uh, Wheatley. Wheatley trying to control the ball. Sends it to the far side. Campanini trying to um, get to it. So this is Luca Campanini. Not to be confused with his brother Carlo. Now with it is McCall. He's the transfer from Eastern Florida State. Goes back to uh, number six. That's Eichlin. And now Olsen sends a long ball way up the field. Trying to control it, Hugo Lopez, double team, gets away from a couple of uh, Spartans rushing it in. There's a shot, trying to get to the short side, but it is wide to the left, and this will be a uh, goal kick for Jake Richards. Again, uh, Richards out of Bedworth, England. Yeah, good little play at the start there for Florida Tech. As you always see in these games, uh, the teams get very physical, very aggressive in the early play. The ball just kind of squirts out to Lopez, and he's able to create a half chance out there and get a shot just off target. So, again, this is Jake Richards. Nearly 1,200 minutes in goal. He has played every single second for Tampa, a 1.68 goals against average, and he's got one shutout in the air as the ball goes out of bounds right in front of us. And Tampa's going to have a throw in. Throwing the ball in is Joey Biza. Ball thrown in into a crowd. Comes outside. Here's a shot for about 40 yards out, and it uh, flies over the net. And this will be a goal kick for Jason Fesque. Fesque, again, the 447 minutes played. He's allowed seven goals, 1.41 goals against average and he's got one shutout in the year uh Catello in his uh games this year has three shutouts ball comes to a uh, midfield so again no score just underway from Rick Stoller Field again J.C. Byrolds and Forrest Faker at a little Saturday night soccer here at the Florida Tech campus reminder we're going to be back here Tuesday for the big showdown with the Rollins College Tars and that'll end the regular season and then we'll see where Florida Tech is as far as the uh, conference standings for the tournament that will begin oh, in about uh, nine days. Comes up to midfield. Nag is being pestered by Torre. Now comes to Lopez on the far side. Here's a pass and intercepted by the Spartans. Spartans trying to break out. So against Spartans, uh, road red with black trimming. Florida Tech as usual, the home whites with the crimson colors. Uh, with it is Till Newman. Newman has not played of late. Might have been coming off an injury. So he's back for the Spartans. So again, the Spartans looking to reorganize. Again, they've lost four of their last five, trying to finish the season strong. Again, uh, they've already been eliminated from the conference tournament, so they're uh, playing their last two games of the year, and they'll be done. Here's uh, Newman. Tries to feed it in the crowd, and... Uh, Wheatley chasing this down, but it looks like it's going to go out. Oh, he saved it. All right. Wheatley off the right foot. Sends it about 40 yards up the field. Nag is trying to get unleashed, and uh, we got a foul against uh, Tampa. Boy, I tell you, per Henrik Nag, he just gets grabbed and bumped. That's and right. What else? I mean, uh, tripped. Uh, pulled, clawed, pulled, yanked. Clawed. <laughs> just everything. Yeah, he had, a, he had good position there as the ball was played forward, and uh, Ramsey Toure, just kind of grabbed on the shirt, uh, Norwegian compatriot, actually. Oh, really? Uh, and, yeah, he just, he probably would have been able to catch the ball before Nag because he seems to have more pace than Nag, but, uh, you know, opted to pull on the shirt, and he gives Florida Tech the free kick. Is that McCall? Yeah, it's free kick? McCall on the free kick. Right, McCall free kick about 40 yards out, sends it toward the net, and nice catch there. That was not easy for Jake Richards. Trying to catch it in the crowd, and that's exactly what he did. So Richards whips it out to the near side as Tampa looks to break out. Ball sent to the uh, far side by uh, by Biza. Pass back to uh, Biza, middle of the field. Biza with a little tap pass to uh, Salocat. Again, he leads Tampa in goals with six. 
trying to uh, chase it down is um, Tamiru, and it goes over the goal line. And this will be a goal kick for Jason Fesque. Again, Fesque, the freshman out of France. Brest Brittany, his hometown. So a kick here for Fesque in the green outfit. Fesque doing a little dancing out there. <laughs> hey, he's trying to play it short, but it looked like the uh, yeah. Tampa striker, Fernandez, was just uh, making it a little difficult on him, so he opted to kick it up long. Yeah, again, we'll talk a little bit about Wancho Fernandez. I remember that first name, Wancho, so that's what he's called. All right, ball tapped up ahead. Uh, this is uh, Nag trying to catch up to it, but it goes out. It's off of Nag, so Tampa will have a uh, throw in. Tampa under the direction of head coach Adrian Bush. He's in his 14th season. He was a very good player at Tampa, four-year career, 1995 grad. So he's been, uh, he's been with the school in a couple of capacities for at least the last 23 years. More about him when we get a chance. Here comes uh, Newman. Newman, a little give and go with his teammate, trying to catch up to it. But uh, nice play there by Demiru to take it away. And now Florida Tech clears it up to midfield. They don't quite get it out. About 35 yards out from net. And now here comes Lopez, who's always a very exciting open field player. Gets up the midfield line, left side to uh, Marcos. Marcos crossing it. And attempted header, but it goes wide. It'll go over the goal line, and this will be a uh, goal kick for Tampa. So one adjustment I've seen that I haven't seen uh, yet this season is they've moved Hugo Lopez, who's played a lot on the left wing for Florida Tech this year. It looks like they've put him in the number 10 role right behind the striker, mm. and they're trying to play the ball into him, and then he's distributing the ball uh, in creative ways. He was almost able to pick uh, Marcos out right there to get an opportunity. So, again, this is Jake Richards, the goalkeeper for Tampa. Hasn't really had much activity the last two games. He had uh, four saves against Lynn and four saves against Henry Riddle. So, not really a lot of work. But, uh, again, a good uh, goalkeeper as the ball goes out of bounds. Tampa will throw it in. Again, uh, Richards, a 1.68 goals against average. He had a 1.25 goals against average last year. This one is chipped up ahead in the top of the 18-yard box. And Florida Tech controlling it. As it comes up to midfield to Lopez. And here's a pass to uh, Marcos running the left side. His shot is uh, deflected. Still with it. Knocked out. And looks like we have a corner kick. And it was again played uh, back from McCall into Hugo Lopez's feet. And then Lopez was able to pick out Marcos and a lot of space there on the left side. It looked like uh, maybe Biza for Tampa got caught forward a little bit. It opened up the whole left side of the field for Florida Tech. Well, again, Florida Tech has had a nice uh, disparity at their advantage with corner kicks. This is going to be their 59th of the year, and they've allowed only 29. <coughs> and again, I don't know if the battle of the corner kicks usually determines who wins, but you always like that more than your opponents because you can get a, a set piece going here. Balls past the net, header. Now another header, Florida Tech trying to head it in, and now Tampa is going to clear it way, way out on the far side. So good defense by Tampa to squash that opportunity. I believe that's Wheatley throwing it in. Yep, and I think Wheatley's got a big throw that he's going to try and hit Campanini with. So Wheatley throws it in. It's headed. I, I think I could tell Wheatley from far away he's got that hairstyle. Mm. So that's good for me. <laughs> Ball comes up to midfield. Here's uh, Olsen. Olsen feeds it near side. Uh, okay, that's uh, Eichlin. And now drop back to Olsen as Florida Tech reorganizing in midfield. Olsen chipping it way up ahead, looking for Lopez. Lopez in the area, but this one is going to go over the goal line. This will be a goal kick for Richards. Boy, how, how perfect does that pass have to be for Lopez to head it in? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't very far off. It's got to be great. Uh, Roycelin's got a good right foot. He likes to play that long diagonal ball, but that time... It's a good ball to play when the defender's not marking Lopez there, but the defender was in his shirt, so yeah. it's really hard to get that one off. All right, Campanini sends it back ahead, but it's uh, back on the Tampa defense. Panthers applying some pressure with Wheatley, and Wheatley goes to the ground. He kind of pulled over the Tampa player and then ended up on the ground. And 
And Florida Tech's could have a throw in here with uh, Wheatley, or maybe it's a kick. No, it'll be a throw in. So Wheatley throw in coming up. We got 35.05 to go in the first half, so almost 10 minutes in, no score. There's a header by Florida Tech straight up in the air. Comes about 30 yards out. Here comes a cross. There's a header. And Tampa looks like they'll be able to clear here. And they send it up to uh, midfield. Comes up to Fernandez. Now sent up far side and too far for the Tampa player to get. It'll be a throw in for Florida Tech. Yeah, Tampa's looked to, looked to uh, counter very quickly there. Uh, that pass there from, uh, it looked like Solocat was just just led Becker a little bit too much. I think it's Solo Cat, a graduate student from Paderborn, Germany. Again, leads the team in goals with six. Again, Tampa's scoring is uh, down quite a bit from last year. All right, here comes uh, Tameru running the left side. Drops it back to McCall with the right foot, sends it top of the 18 yard box and set it up in the air. and. Nag trying to get the header, and he's towering over the goalkeeper. That was like David and Goliath in that play. That's right. Good job from Richards to be able to snag the ball away from his head there. Uh, I'll tell you, Nag is probably the last player that Richards wants to see right in his living room. All right, Richards sends a kick up the far side of the field. And the ball comes back to uh, midfield. Uh, Florida Tech football off to a slow start after a bit of a lengthy rain delay. They're down 21 to three. Got the uh, Panther women in soccer on the road to Tampa. So we'll try and get an update on that as it comes back to Tampa's end. So we've got a lot of, a lot of things going on today. Uh, volleyball's up in Orlando at a crossover tournament. All right, here come the Spartans. They have it far side of the field. Again, uh, we're pretty far away. Sent up to the right side, but it goes over the goal line, and uh, this is going to be a goal kick for Fesque. Tell you what, uh, Demera looked really comfortable there, but that almost picked out the uh, the Tampa player Newman at the back post because he, he the ball was played right in between where the goalkeeper is and where the defender is. It was almost a, uh, a great opportunity from Tampa. Mm. Great delivery played in. Again, Fesque in a lot of ways kind of the quarterback on the team, barking on instructions. He sends a long kick, good 50 yards up the field. Trying to take it away to Myru. He does, chips it up ahead to Nag. Nag trying to get it ahead. Now he gets it back, now loses it, and the Spartans have it. With it is a 24 nickels. Comes back to Richards in goal. He quickly sends it up to a midfield. 32 minutes to go, so we're 13 minutes in. Again, no score between these... Uh, Two rivals in the Sunshine State Conference. Here's uh, Newman trying to get a pass off. Does so. There's a shot and got deflected. Goes over the goal line and looks like Tampa's going to have their first uh, corner kick of the game. What a great save there by Fesque. Just really quick reaction. He's not able to get his hands to the ground, so he just uses his feet. But a really good opportunity there, and it looks like it was Newman on the strike. Uh, for Tampa, this is going to be their 52nd corner kick of the year. Again, Florida Tech had their first corner kick uh, recently, and uh, they have 59 of the year, so not much just disparity there. So Spartans will take this. I'm not sure who's taking it, but it's going to come off the left foot. And actually, he just taps at his teammate. Now it's crossed. Goes well on the far side of the field. Spartans trying to keep it in the immediate area. Sent toward the net, and Fesque comes out, and that one is sent over the net. That was close. Yeah, not uh, after making that great save uh, that Fesque did earlier. That was not the best keeping from him. The, def the uh, attacker had great position for Tampa. He was able to chest the ball, basically. And uh, Fesque just came flying out way too early. Had no chance of punching the ball away. And the Tampa player was almost able to just lift it right over his head and into the goal. So there are times when a goal he has to be aggressive, and then there are other times they need to back off a little bit. Huh? That's right. That, that time it would have been better to just stay in your net, let your defender get over, and uh, mm. his back was to goal, so it would have been really hard for him to direct a shot on goal. All right, we got a foul against Tampa. I think Nag was involved, but uh, he did not get the foul. Tampa did. So the Panthers will have a kick near midfield. Midfield. 
It uh, comes to Wheatley. Wheatley with a shot toward the net, and it's punched out nicely by Richards. Good play by him. And now here comes Tampa in the transition. Pass up ahead really to nobody in particular. To Myru, chips it back to uh, Olsen. Or actually, that's Roisland, I'm sorry, out of Norway. So Roisland with it. Roisland now gets it back. He'll try the other side. This is uh, Eichland. Eichland has a lot of room to dribble. He gives it up to Campanini. Long pass with the right foot to nobody in particular. <laughs> and now Tampa has it. Here comes uh, Newman. He's got pretty good speed. Oh, there's a little bit of a hip check by uh, Campanini. That would have been, been okay in hockey, but not in soccer. And I mean, that could be a yellow card kind of thing, but that's definitely a foul. It was a great effort there. Tampa tried to play a really quick counter when Florida Tech had their, uh, you know, their arms up saying, what's the foul? Tampa tried to do a quick restart and catch Florida Tech off guard. Didn't quite come off, but. That was at least a foul, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> all right, here's a Wheatley with a shot. And oh, goes wide. I'm not sure if uh, Richards got a deflection on it, but. That went wide. Oh, definitely. Richards got he Richards did. got a got a big strong hand on it. Was able to deflect it away from goal. Uh, good opportunity there from Wheatley. There's going to be a lot of opportunities this game if these two teams continue to be so open in the midfield. That's for sure. Good game for the neutrals is what it's looking like it's going to be. So the Panthers will have their second corner kick of the game and their 60th of the year. Let's see who's taking it. Looks like Campanini down Campanini. there in the corner. Yeah, the in swinging right footed corner kick here. And then again, this is uh, Luca, not to be confused with Carlo, who's uh, not active tonight. Ball sent toward the net, headed straight up in the air. McCall settles it nicely, takes a shot toward the net, a little bit of a cross into a crowd, and it's a header on top of the net. Well, good try, a little bit too high. Yeah, good effort there. So what happens on those corner kicks when the ball comes out like that is the defense tries to squeeze out as quick as possible. McCall just tried to clip it right over the back of the defense, and he found Nag. Nag just couldn't lift it. He couldn't redirect it on the goal. It was just a little over the, the crossbar there. So, again, Jake Richards with the uh, goal kick. Again, uh, second team all Sunshine State Conference the last two years for uh, Richards. So he's been a good one for the uh, Spartans. Again, this one goes out of bounds. Again, the Spartans with a disappointing year. Again, they made the NCAA tournament last year, lost to West Alabama in the first round. This year, again, some uh, injuries and some tough one-goal losses, and they're going to be uh, they're going to be sitting home after their two regular season games. Again, they got one more after tonight, and then that'll be it for them. But again, the rest of the conference, uh, who knows what's going to happen as far as the pairings for the tournament coming up in about nine days. All right, Panthers trying to break out the other way. And we got a foul of some sort. Let's see if there's anything else here. The official is stopping the clock, which means there might be some yellow showing here. Let's see. Or it could just be the 15-second lecture. Oh, there's the yellow card. And uh, head coach Adrian Bush is livid. Oh, no, that's an assistant coach, I guess. Yeah, he's not happy. He thinks that the <laughs> assistant referee on the other side of the field called the foul for Tampa. Uh, but the referee seems to have th – see, he, he probably saw a little tugging of the shirt, a little little pushing and pulling uh, from Traore. Uh, I believe that's Maurice Lonegard, the assistant coach, is doing a lot of the yelling. And also uh, Adrian Bush doing a fair amount as well. Sent toward the net. And we got a uh, foul, Florida Tech, and let's see what we got here. Looks like a little head oh. collision there for uh, Joey Biza and Ooh. Erland Eichland for Florida Tech. As uh, Biza walks away, he looks frustrated. He just got elbowed in the head. Eichland has stayed down, and the uh, athletic trainer, Steve McRae, mm. Stephen McRae has... Uh, uh, was it number two, Tory who got the yellow? Yes. Number two? Okay, I thought so. So Torrey got the yellow, and now Florida Tech with an injury, hoping they can, uh, who is that? That's uh, Erland Eichland over oh, there. Eichland, okay. Yeah, he, he was up for the uh, for the corner kick, I think, and or the uh, free kick. Again, Eichland graduate student, Oslo, Norway, Norwegian Business School. 
So uh, sounds like he's very good in the classroom as well, as most of these athletes are anyway. All right, Eichelin's going to come out. We'll have to see if he'll come back in. Yeah, it looks like he's going to – he has to check out because there's a head injury and the trainer came yeah. onto the field. The referee's telling him right now, hey, I'll wave you in as soon as the ball comes back in play. No, it doesn't uh, look too serious. No. Well, again, the protocol with the concussions, you gotta, you got to follow that, and I'm, I'm all for it. That's right. All right, so here's Richards with a long kick up the field. That's good 60 yards up the field. And this one headed out of bounds by Florida Tech, so Tampa throw in. Not quite midway through the half. Got 26-30 to go, and again, no score. Again, Tampa leads the all-time series 35-15. to And again, there have been five ties. Again, Florida Tech's last win was 2014 over in Tampa, 1-0. So the Spartans have gotten the better end of things uh, lately in the last few years. Panthers trying to right the ship tonight. Here's Wheatley with a pass up ahead, but nobody is there, and uh, Richards will come far out of his goal to uh, get the ball. Yeah, very very poor pass there from Wheatley as Florida Tech was trying to break quickly. There was really nothing on going direct forward like that, but he did have help, reinforcements coming up the left side of the field and Tefuma DeMiro, and I think uh, DeMiro had a little word with him, like, hey, you know, I'm coming. Just don't be wasteful. Yeah. Let's, let's try and build this up. All right, Tampa with the ball midfield. Again, far side. Again, we really have trouble seeing the numbers from here. That, and that's Torre. I know what he looks like. He looks very athletic, I'll tell you that. All right, here come the Spartans. And ball goes out of bounds. That was uh, Newman trying to connect with his uh, teammate. That's uh, 16, uh, Biza. And now Florida Tech throw in by Wheatley. Way up the field. Trying to connect with Nag. Nag battling for the ball. Tampa trying to keep it away from him. Goes back to Richards, and Richards, boy, he sends a booming kick over the midfield line. Trying to run under the ball is Fernandez, and we got a whistle. Uh, foul on Tampa, looks like. Yeah, I tell you what, the center backs for Florida Tech, Roycelin and Eichlin, they really need to be on their toes all game because at any moment, Tampa can just clear a ball forward, and Fernandez is ready and willing to run onto it. So... Uh, looked like they were caught napping a little bit. Fernandez almost took advantage, but the referee said uh, he kind of clipped the legs there. Uh, would you say Tampa's got kind of above average speed? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I guess a lot of the teams in the conference are speedy, but... These guys are willing to use it, though. I mean, they, yeah. they do not look like a two-win team from, from the start of this match. I'll tell you, there, there's no easy games in this conference, so Florida Tech better not look at the standings too closely for this one. This Tampa club certainly capable. All right, Campanini with it at midfield, trying to reorganize, sends it to the far side. Goes to, um, okay, number eight battling for the ball. Again, that's Marcos and a foul on uh, Florida Tech. Looked like Gautier. Uh, both uh, fullbacks for Florida Tech are trying to get forward. Gautier got into a good position there. It was a good opportunity for him and Marcos to combine high up the field, but a poor pass from Gautier kind of ruined the flow of that attack. Okay, Tampa clearing it up to a midfield header by McCall, trying to keep it in the immediate area. Here comes Nag into the fray, trying to control it. Knocked away, and here come the Spartans trying to beat the Panthers in transition. As they run it up. Pass up ahead. Battle for the ball, comes back to the Spartans. Newman gets a shot off, headed out by the Panthers. McCall turns up field. Gives it to uh, Demiru. Now up for Wheatley. Wheatley trying to make an inside move. Still has the ball after a little bit of contact. There's a left footed shot, but it goes wide. And that was by, I think, Marcos? Yeah, yeah, and I tell you what, the Florida Tech coaching staff will have no problem with Marcos. He had that half yard of space. He's, he's got the green light to shoot from there. We've seen him score a couple big goals Yeah, he's got a big difference. leg. I remember that one game yeah. he did here, he had a couple of goals. That's right, he didn't quite connect with this one, but uh, that's, that's a good opportunity for Florida Tech. All right, the clock is going to stop. we got a Tampa injury. It doesn't look terribly serious with the players sitting on the grass, so they're going to uh, evaluate him, so... We are five seconds away from the midway point, 22.35 to go. And we are scoreless, and we're going to get a water break uh, squeezed in here. That's always a good idea. Again, not much wind tonight. 
it's uh, a little bit warm. That's right. Even warmer than it that's should right. Be. The uh, the flag is still near the Rick Stoller Field uh, scoreboard. Yep, and there's a, a big advantage for Tampa that you mentioned earlier in the game, but they've had a, a week of preparation for this game, so they've been able to freshen up a little bit. Mm. Uh, Florida Tech, the, you know, at the grueling season, Wednesday, Saturday games, and sometimes those legs feel a little heavy on Saturday, yeah. especially when there's no breeze and it just feels a little muggy in the in the arena. But just you say that, I feel a little breeze coming yeah. on now. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the wind is feeling guilty and, you know, it's going to help us out here. <laughs> Again, the flag is pretty still. But otherwise, I mean, a pretty good night for soccer. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast so far. And again, uh, we're going to be right back here. Um, you know, I'm thinking it should be Wednesday, but it's actually Tuesday. So a little bit earlier. That's right. Usual, uh, the Rollins College Tars. Yeah, and I think that's so that uh, at the beginning of the season, both teams, and it, it looks like, you know, Rollins may not be getting into the conference tournament, but right. they wanted a little bit, they wanted an extra day of recovery before the conference tournament started back up. So they said one less day of recovery in between the Saturday-Wednesday game, uh, but a little bit extra time to get ready for that conference tournament. The bad thing is not much recovery from this game. Just That's days. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Well, you take the good with the bad, I guess. Yep. All right, Richards with a kick here, coming off the right foot. Since a line drive, I'll tell you, he has got quite a foot. And it's uh, taken by uh, Tamiru, chips it up ahead to Nag, trying to, Chase after the ball, about three red shirts are there, and there's a booming shot, and that one will make the softball field as it skips over the roof of the Tim Wakefield batting facility. Yeah, and earlier we talked about Florida Tech's center backs taking a little nap. Same thing happened there with Tampa where, uh, you know, if, if Perrin Nag is getting five yards behind your center back, something has gone wrong because he's not getting that five yards with speed. He's just getting it because somebody wasn't ready to start running backwards. Again, Pierre Henrik Nag tied atop the conference in goals with 10 and in the top three in points as well, having a stellar year. Here comes uh, Wheatley. Wheatley has Lopez on the left, cuts it up the middle. There's a shot, and it goes wide. So pretty good shot there by Wheatley, but he hooked it wide. Yeah, another good opportunity. The opportunity started with uh, Luca Campanini rising highest for that header, and then all of a sudden just one 50-50 win from Campanini allows Wheatley to... Uh, show his skill going forward, and he gets a good shot on. All right, here's Paris Junior Rosari checking in, the senior out of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, one of the three seniors honored before tonight. Again, it is uh, senior night, so we wish Rosari the best. After the season ends, he will not be coming back. Oh, yeah. Ball goes out of bounds, far side. And for, for this game, he's just going to, as he always does, inject that that. Uh, very direct, quick running and pace into the game for Florida Tech, especially coming in for Nag, who offers a lot of good things, but just different. So good option for Florida Tech to well, be able to put him on. Rosario's only 5'6". <laughs> Paul goes over yeah. the goal. I, 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 feel I, like, I, I like 5'6 people. I feel like they list him taller than he is. You know, Some people always, like uh, in the NBA, everybody wants, all the centers say they're actually they're 7 foot, and really they're 6'10", 6'11". Six, six, I don't now, think he's all he's now Rosary might be <laughs> taller than Jose Altuve of the Astros though. That's so, true, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately the Astros are now sitting home. No repeat of the World Series. Ball sent way up the field. Now Tampa with a kick sends it up to midfield. Lopez trying to control it. Now it comes to Wheatley. Wheatley, tap pass to McCall. Now up ahead, here comes Rosary. Or Rosary rather. Rosary trying to control the ball, drops back to Wheatley. Wheatley cross, Campanini intercepted. And foul Florida Tech, it looks like. Yep, yep. Uh, Wheatley, when he was trying to receive that pass from Campanini, just got his legs tangled up with the Tampa defender who was in really good position. And uh, uh, yellow card, I think. Yep, it Number looks 10. like Tony uh, Soler, Soler yeah. uh, said, said the magic word, yeah. and the referee tried to nip that problem in the butt, I think. Uh, really a... A silly, silly foul with the position Solaire plays in. He might need to he might need to commit a few fouls this game, and now he's got to be on his best behavior. So if he gets that extra yellow card, it's going to be trouble. Oh, Solaire out of Valencia, Spain. Again, uh, Tony Solaire, quite a few international players in this uh, roster for uh, Tampa. In fact, they have 21 international players, a bunch from Germany and Spain. And again, he's out of the town of Valencia, which is known for their fruits like oranges and stuff like that. All right, here come the Spartans. 
trying to break through. There's a pass. And we got a collision, and they say play on. Here comes Wheatley. Boy, he's a big guy. And Wheatley trying to brush past Solaire, and Wheatley is going to get the foul. Uh, pretty interesting there. It looked like there was a, a pretty clear foul on the Florida Tech player. Uh, the two Florida Tech coaches, are uh, they seem incensed about it. Um, but the referee didn't. He must have spotted a, a little contact with the ball. Um, oh, Robert Chan had a box seat for that one. That's right. right. Yeah, there. it was right in front of the Florida Tech bench. Usually you get a bigger reaction when there's a foul right in front of your bench like that. You're not going to fool Robin Chan when it's right in front of that's you. That's right. You could have an opinion about it. Oh, yeah. All right, here's Solaire, who again just picked up a yellow card, so he has to be careful. Sends the top of the 18-yard box into a crowd. Lopez trying to clear, and now it's cleared out by the Panther back line up to midfield. <laughs> Newman and Rosary batting for the ball. Nice slide there by... Uh, Newman, but now it comes to Rosary making a run far side. Four white shirts going for the net. Rosary with a cross into a crowd. There's a shot. Doesn't quite make it on goal. There's another shot deflected. And a Tampa player is hurt. I'll tell you, that's like a defenseman in hockey taking one for the team when there's a shot from the point. Yeah, I hope that young man is okay. Just fantastic play there by uh, it looks like Jan it looks like Jan Walker who's down oh, right man. now. He really the last ditch effort trying to get in the way of that shot uh, by Sol Wheatley, uh, but a really exceptional counterattack there by Florida Tech as you see Campanini just plays the ball 40 yards in front of Rosary. Rosary's so fast he's able to get onto it, put a good cross into the box, and then you know ping pongs around a little bit, falls to Wheatley. And uh, if it wasn't for Walker making that outstanding last-ditch ditch effort, uh, could be could be 1-0 for the Panthers. So, again, Walker is the uh, injured player. Well, he's out of Switzerland. Transfer from Notre Dame College. Not quite sure what Notre Dame College that is. There's one I know out in California. Hmm. Oh, looks like he might be okay. You know, we're just hoping the ball didn't hit him in the head. Boy, that would be, that'd be a concussion protocol kind of situation well, hopefully he'll be back as he uh, is scored off the field yeah and sometimes uh, players will go down when they've just been counterattacked or they had to make a big 80 yard run just to get their team to regroup and get back and kind of gather themselves so maybe a little gamesmanship there all right let's see Florida Tech's got have a throw in throw in by Wheatley Campanini trying to control it Back to Wheatley, sent toward the net, but it goes off the side of the net, and this will be a goal kick for uh, Jake Richards. Yeah, a little bit of a wasteful uh, effort there by Wheatley. I think he was trying to swerve the ball uh, towards the six-yard box, but he kind of dragged it and ends up looking like a shot, but I don't think it had the power that he would have wanted to shoot from there. Uh, Omgod Salah, that's quite a name. He's checking in for the uh, Spartans out of Hungary. Wow. That's an interesting part of the world, Hungary. That's that's far away. And he's the only Hungary player on the uh, roster. So, again, Salah in for the Spartans. Again, boy, 21 international uh, players. Of course, you know, Florida Tech and international universities. So, so is Tampa, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, there's Torre with the ball. Now he gets it back from his teammate. Again, that's Ramsey Torre, who speaks French. He's a business and economics major, born in Oslo, Norway, but actually lived also in Togo, Africa. So he's he's had quite a life. <laughs> I tell you, these international players, but they really bounce around. They just go to different parts of the world. They can play soccer and have a good time. Oh yeah. So again, this is uh, Torre. Gets it back to his uh, defense, and now over to uh, Newman. Newman has a little bit of operating room. Across the midfield line with a right foot pass. Cleared out by the Panthers to midfield. Lopez with a header. Wheatley trying to settle it. Quick pass up ahead. Trying to connect with Marcos. But the ball goes to the goalkeeper, Richards, who sends a really high kick to midfield. To Myru trying to settle it. Now it goes back to Roisland. Roisland right-footed pass. Lopez middle of the field, but Tampa has it. Got 15.50 to go in the first half and no score. Uh, Florida Tech's had a couple of decent opportunities to score, but uh, nothing there. Tampa, I think, had one fairly good opportunity, but otherwise it's just a struggle. 
All right, Tampa will have a throw in here. Looks like 16 Biza is going to throw it in. So Biza looking to get it in. Throws it in near the uh, top of the 18-yard box. Cleared out by Florida Tech. High kick. Ramsey Torre trying to send it right back in. And we got a foul Florida Tech. Yeah, it looks like a handball. The ball just popped Hand off the ground handball. and uh, hit him right in the hand. All right, so Soler, who again has a yellow card and has to uh, watch his uh, disposition, will uh, have a kick here. <clears throat> off the left foot, uh, Florida Tech with a two-person wall, including McCall. Again, Fesque is just looking for a clear, clear vision here. Players shuffling around. Curled in. And nice job by Fesque. Comes, uh, comes out of nowhere and grabs it. Sends a high kick, trying to connect with Rosary. And now Tampa controls it just over the midfield line. <clears throat> so 14-20 to go in the half. Again, no score. So goals might be at a premium tonight. Torre sends it up ahead. Spartans with it far side. There's a shot. And it goes wide. So this will be a goal kick for Fesque. Yeah, good patient attack there from Tampa, though, as they just uh, complete a couple small passes when Florida Tech's not pressing hard enough in their own third of the field. It's going to create opportunities for Salah to be able to just pull a quick trigger. Ball sent up ahead. And looking for um, Marcos, but this one goes out of bounds off of Tampa. Florida Tech throw in with Wheatley. You know, Wheatley's going to allow uh, Tamiru to throw it in. I'll tell you, Wheatley's pretty good with those throw ins. He could throw it in about 20 yards. I mean, but Tamiru has it. Nice little move, Tamiru, but uh, trying to get through too much red. He's denied. Now, Marcos trying to take it away, and Marcos and the Tampa player getting a bit physical. Here's Tamiru, and Tamiru goes down. It's out the, outside the 18-yard box, so there won't be a penalty kick, but Florida Tech will get a kick here. Yeah, very dangerous opportunity for a free kick as it uh, looks like Campanini. This is a good one for a right-footed player, but a uh, great work over right on the sideline by uh, Guillermo Marcos, who works back defensively when DeMiro gets caught up a little bit, and uh, he's able to give, uh, it looks like Fernandez, a little drop of the shoulder, uh, push him off the ball, and then Florida Tech's right back down Tampa's throat. All right, Tampa's going to have a four-person wall. Uh, Wheatley is trying to join the party here. He's probably not a very popular member, though. So Lopez will take this kick. And uh, Richards is trying to get a good view of this in the Tampa goal. Actually, it's McCall. There's a pass. And loose ball. Tampa trying to clear it out. There's a shot, but it goes wide. Uh, Wheatley. Yeah, a good little set play opportunity there for Florida Tech. As I was wondering why uh, Craig McCall was on the kick. He's not usually the one to shoot from that spot. A mm. uh, little play is set up. Uh, looks like this is something they've been working on on the training ground. And uh, it ends up not working perfectly with a poor pass from Marcos. But uh, Wheatley's still able to get a shot and almost break the deadlock. All right, so the Spartans looking to clear out. To Torre sends it back to Richards. And now Richards. With a long kick, look out. That was coming toward us <laughs> right in our living room, but uh, didn't quite get near us, and it goes out of bounds. All right, Florida Tech throw in with Demiru. 11 and a half to go in the first half. Again, no score. And the official saying, hey, Demiru, you got to back up a little bit. So Demiru, about uh, 10 yards over the midfield line, throws it in. Comes back to uh, Tampa, trying to clear it out is uh, Salah. And now ball out of bounds. And Tampa throwing. <clears throat> a lot of chirping going on out there. <clears throat> yeah, both teams I think are a little, a little frustrated. They've each had a, a couple good opportunities that they haven't, that they've squandered. And, uh, you know, both teams want to get a goal on, this, on the score sheets to ease the tension a little bit for themselves. Spartans being very careful here on defense as they try and bring it up. Pass intercepted. McCall 
McCall double teamed. Now Tampa takes the ball away. Looking to go the other way with uh, Soler. Far side. Tampa player trying to get a shot off. Drops it back. I can't see the ball. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm five miles away, you know. It's Trying to look through about 40 pairs of legs. Yeah, <laughs> at least. <laughs> All right, ball sent up to midfield. So uh, Florida Tech uh, able to dodge that problem there. All right, Spartans in midfield trying to get back into Panther territory here. There's a shot. Uh-oh. It's a goal. Yep, the assistant referee's flag stays down. It was a, just a really expertly taken goal by Juancho Fernandez. Is the ball? I'm not sure who played the ball into him, but again, it looked like Florida Tech center backs were napping a little bit, and uh, just took that that little run in right behind, in between the two center backs. And uh, what a finish there by Fernandez. So Fernandez with a goal, and we'll see if there's an assist. I couldn't quite see who had the assist. It was a fantastic ball played in, and right in between the keeper and the center backs. So it's number nine, Fernandez. And we'll see if we can come up with an assist. Man, what it might not be. I tell you what, it cool as a cucumber on that finish. He just just passes it right into the corner, right by Fesquay, who's uh, an outstanding goalie, but he, there was nothing he could do on that one. I'm all, I'm all for getting more cool out here. It's yeah. really hot out here. It's, <laughs> All right, so Juancho Fernandez with a goal, and Tampa leads it 1-0, so they it, strike first. It sounds like it was Jan Walker on the assist, number 19 for Tampa. Okay, so Walker, we're going to give an assist. So he had, he had that last-ditch save uh, on a Wheatley shot. That could have been a goal for Florida Tech, and then he produces a great assist for, Flo for, uh, yeah. for Fernandez. So really, Walker is playing fantastic for Tampa right now. And the Panther coaching staff is... Uh, Yelling a bit at the poor flag person down the right side, saying, hey, what's going on? It should be our ball. That's right. And they're trying to just, uh, they're going to, the coaches are going to get a little more into the game now to try and get their players to wake up and have a good response. All right, ball out of bounds. Florida Tech throw in with Wheatley. Wheatley with a high throw in to Lopez, who gets knocked down. Nothing called. Didn't look too serious. And the ball is right near the Florida Tech bench. Tampa keeps it in. Nicely with uh, Salah. <coughs> Wheatley pass to uh, 18. That's uh, Gautier. And now here come the Panthers. Is that Rosary? Okay, Rosary with it. Trying to make a move. There's a shot, but it goes way high and wide and goes out of bounds. <coughs> Yeah, usually he does a little bit better on those where he has a 1v1 opportunity. He usually just dinks it out to himself where he can whip a, whip across in, but he couldn't quite get his foot around the ball on that one and just kind of was more of a shank than a cross. Uh, by the way, for Fernandez, that was his sixth goal of the year, and he ties uh, Salocat, or Salocat rather, for the uh, team lead. They both have uh, six goals. And Walker picks up his second assist on the year. So, again, Tampa leading at 1-0. We're down to 7.50 to go in this uh, first half. Tampa looking to clear it out. Florida Tech trying to get the equalizer. We got a foul, Florida Tech. Yeah, uh, Marcos took a little chance there, try to get some contact on the defensive player to make him make a mistake. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good place to take those kind of chances. Referee might not call the foul, and uh, you're right in on their goal, right, in their, right on their front door. Uh, Robert Chan is going to shake things up a little bit. Abram Murphy and Dewan Egwes are going to check in when they're allowed to. Hopefully they can give the team a little bit of a spark here. Yeah, a little, here. little fresh legs. Yeah, fresh legs, yeah. All right, ball goes out of bounds, far side. And let's see, Florida Tech throw in. And now it uh, looks like Murphy and uh, Egwes will be allowed to check in. Here they come. So Wheatley's going to go out, and let's see who else. And uh, Hugo Lopez is coming Hugo, off. Hugo, okay. Which uh, both of them, have, they've uh, created some chances for Florida Tech. They've done some good things. But, uh, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, they had a game three days ago. So he wants, they want to keep the legs fresh, it looks like. Uh, and um, I'm going to guess they're probably going to be out for the rest of the half. Mm -hmm. Got 6.40 to go. That's right, soon, yeah, yeah. All right, Tampa with the ball, trying to clear it to midfield. They do. Nice uh, interception by Demiru. Now it comes to Murphy, who again just checked in. Murphy, pretty good speed, running up the left side. Here comes the double team and gets bumped into, and ball goes out of bounds. Uh, Panther throwing. Again, Murphy, local product, West Shore High, Melbourne Beach, West Shore uh, High School. 
Comes back to uh, McCall. Drops back to Roisland. Far side. Panthers have it. Campanini trying to catch up to the ball. Goes over the goal line, and this will be a goal kick for the uh, Spartans. Yeah, it was a, a good job there by Hovet to just uh, shield the ball out of bounds as Campanini was right on him uh, and, you know, made himself big and strong, and Campanini couldn't get around him to the ball. So really, really textbook defending there from Hovet. So Jake Richard, Richards with a goal kick, again, out of Bed Bedworth, England. Again, second team, all Sunshine State Conference member the last two years, and looks like he could be getting some similar honors this year. He's had a good year. Kept Tampa in uh, some of their games. Again, two and seven in one goal games. The difference between Tampa being where they are or possibly being a uh, tournament team. All right, with it for the Panthers, 27. That's uh, Egwes. Drops it back to Olsen. Goes up ahead. Panthers have a far side. That's uh, Rosary. Paris for the pass. Trying to connect with Murphy. Now there's a cross. And it goes off the side of the net. And Florida Tech looks like they're going to get a corner kick. Yeah, well done there to uh, win a corner kick. But it's not very patient for Florida Tech. There weren't many options to pass the ball. And uh, rather than keep the ball and try and work it to the other side of the field, get the left back involved moving up the field for Florida Tech, uh, Rosary instead just kind of tries to jam it down the throat of Tampa. Uh, it's something that Florida Tech's been doing a lot of this season, but, um, you know, sometimes you win a corner and sometimes Tampa, Tampa easily collects it. So another corner kick for the Panthers coming off the left foot, sent toward the top of the 18-yard box, headed out. Panthers trying to keep it in. Loose, and Tampa's going to be able to clear, and here they come as they approach the midfield line. Boy, that guy could fly. Can't see the number, but, man, he is fast. And pass goes off of Florida Tech. Throw in for the Spartans as we're down to um, 3.45 to go in this uh, first half. Again, Tampa leading it 1-0 on the goal by Fernandez, his sixth of the year. And, again, Walker got the assist in that goal. Ball thrown in far side by the Spartans. And loose ball, and this one's going to go. It's going to come back to uh, Fesquay. Tell you what, one thing that I'm seeing a lot of for both teams is a ball comes out of traffic, and it goes to the, the pivot point, the center midfielder. And rather than opening their body up and getting it to the other side, they're, uh, they're just trying to go right back into traffic. You know, you kind of want that center midfielder to move the – play to the other side where there's less people. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ball thrown in. And this is a kick sent to the far side. What kick that was by Biza. <laughs> this one goes out of bounds. Yeah, I think that was a miss hit. I think he was trying to direct it towards the Florida mm. Tech corner flag ends up directing it towards the bleachers. Yeah. <laughs> a pretty good crowd on hand on this Saturday night. Probably about 70% full of the bleachers. Of course, no school tomorrow. That always helps out. Here's, uh, here's, here's a shot and a save. Beautiful shot there, but a nice save by Richards. Who took that? <coughs> that was Marcos with the, Marcos, the powerful wow. left foot again. Oh, he has got a booming leg. So that might have been Florida Tech's best chance here in the first half. They had one other time where they came close, but that was definitely an exclamation point on that shot. We have exactly two minutes to go in the half. Florida Tech would love to steal one here. Here's uh, McCall. McCall. Right-footed pass to Rosary. Drops it back McCall. Sends a high ball toward the net. And Richards able to make the easy catch. There's another good opportunity for Florida Tech to get out of traffic. They, they had uh, Iguez just sitting there waiting for the ball. And they could have gotten Tatfuma Demero involved up the field. But instead they try and just jam it down the throat of Tampa. Oh, and and uh, with these with these defenders and this goalie, it's going to be hard for them to do. 125 to go. Hey, maybe maybe you should get into coaching. You could help <laughs> oh, no, 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 oh, no. You don't want to do that? <laughs> no. Okay. No, no, that. You've got some good coaching uh, <laughs> capabilities there. You definitely are opinionated. 
Well, yeah, I got, I got that going, but yeah. that's about it. Okay. All right, Florida Tech trying to clear their end. We have exactly one minute to go in the half, and again, Tampa looking as if they might go in with a one nothing lead. Florida Tech would like to get another chance here. Comes back to Eichland. And Florida Tech kind of taking their time here, 50 seconds to go, deep in their own end. Let's see if Fesque tries to kick it up the field. This one is probably going to go out. And it is out as uh, Demiru tried to keep it in. Yeah, they tell the uh, the goalkeepers or the center backs when they're playing that long ball to overhit it rather than underhit it. If you overhit it, it ends up being a throw. And if you underhit it, they're coming right back at you. Yeah. All right, 25 seconds to go. So Tampa might have a last opportunity here as uh, Demiru chips it out. Uh, Tampa doesn't look like they're in any big hurry. 15 seconds remaining. And throwing it in is going to be Biza as we're down to seven seconds. Well, Tampa kind of taking their time. You'd think they'd want a, another opportunity here. Florida Tech steals it, and that will do it for the first half. So both teams will have a lot to talk about, but particularly Florida Tech as they find themselves on the short end of the scoreboard, uh, down one nothing at the uh, – Halftime mark. Some uh, quick thoughts about uh, halftime? Yeah, I mean, both teams are getting lots of chances. Like I said earlier, this is a game for the neutrals where there's a lot of open uh, play in the midfield and one team counterattacks, then it's the next team's turn to attack. And there have been a lot of chances. I suspect there will be more goals in this game. Mm. And if Florida, if Florida Tech can get one goal back, uh, I suspect with the, uh, the history that Tampa has had this season – and all the results that have gone against them in one-goal games, I expect them to tighten up a little bit. So if Florida Tech can get that one goal back, uh, I think they'll, they'll be the ones that are confident and positive, and Tampa might, uh, you know, they could shrink up. So some of the passing for Florida Tech tonight has been a little suspect, I guess? So. Yeah, yeah, they've been, they've been doing a lot of uh, trying to pass through Tampa players. They've, they've yeah. been very... And making very risky passes. Uh, instead of trying to find open space. Instead of trying to find the open space. Yeah. So yeah. That, that could be something I'm sure uh, Coach Chan and Coach Moon will, or will talk about a little bit. Um, but then again, that's something, that's a characteristic of this team that's that's happened most of the season. Um, but the results have been good. So, you know, maybe you get Perrin Ricknag back in the game and some of those passes that don't look so good when you have that type of striker and look a lot better. Uh, before we take a break, I'm anxious about Florida Tech football, whether we got an update. Down 21-10. Well, 21-10, that's doable. Florida Tech down 21-10. Any update on the women? Okay. I think I heard uh, when Florida Tech's uh, touchdown was off of a uh, strip sack uh, oh. touchdown return. So. Well, again, Panther football playing a tough uh, opponent tonight, <laughs> University of West Florida. They were the, they were the national runner-ups last year to Texas A&M Commerce. And they're – we're down one nothing. Down one nothing. All right, so the Florida Tech women are down one nothing as well as the men are here at halftime. So the uh, the Panthers sports evening, not uh, going too well right now, but that not, could change. Not off to a great start, yeah. yeah. But. All right, well, I'm J.C. Meyer, Olds for Forrest Fagert. We'll uh, take about a seven or eight-minute break and be back. And, uh, again, Florida Tech uh, trailing at Tampa one nothing at the half. So we'll be back. This is uh, Florida Tech men's soccer along the Florida Tech – Sports Network. I guess we can turn this down. Oh, yeah, yeah.
All right, welcome back to Rick Stoller Field in the campus of Florida Tech. Again, J.C. Myrolds with Forrest Fegert. Again, another Saturday night of men's soccer here on the Panther campus. And the Tampa men leading the Florida Tech men uh, one to nothing. Uh, before we talk about the half, I want to get this announcement out. And, I mean, this is a Florida Tech broadcast, but, I mean, we do have people from Tampa who hopefully are watching the game and enjoying the results so far because their team is up one nothing. But I've been asked to give a special get well and keep fighting to assistant coach Keith Folk's wife, Mara Folk, who just finished the second of three rounds of chemo. So, uh, and the uh, players are wearing uh, pink socks and hands for hands? bands. Okay, all right. Oh, bands. Yep, they've got the pink bands. You can see them on the wrist okay, uh, so, if you check it out. Yeah. So, again, uh, Keith Folk's an assistant coach for Tampa, and again, his wife going through some very difficult times. So, uh, Mara, we are thinking about you, and I'm really glad I got that in. I meant to get it in earlier, and I just wasn't thinking about it. So, Mara Falk, best wishes to you, and, uh, you know, we hope you uh, get well in your uh, battle. So, again, one nothing. Florida Tech uh, trailing at Tampa at uh, halftime. Uh, Florida Tech is leading in total shots 13-5, to and corner kicks 3-1. to uh, Tampa's goalie Richards, two saves. Florida Tech's goalie Fesque with one. Uh, fouls are relatively low. I thought there are more fouls in this, but Florida Tech with eight and Tampa with five. Again, the only goal by Tampa, 35-31 uh, mark. Wancho Fernandez scoring with the assist to uh, Jan Walker. So, again, one nothing, one nothing Tampa at the half as we're about to get underway here. So, uh, Forrest, hopefully Coach Chan had some uh, thoughts to relay to his players, and we'll see maybe a little different style here. Yeah, yeah, and it was interesting just the dynamic between the two teams. Uh, Florida Tech actually looked, and I think that Florida Tech wasn't playing quite as well as Tampa this half, but they looked a little bit more relaxed. Uh, you know, Coach Chan and Coach Moon were getting their messages to the players and letting them know everything like they normally do. Uh, but if you looked over at the Tampa bench, you know, everybody's sitting on the bench, coaches, you know, trying to keep them motivated to keep the the foot on the gas because like like we've like we've pointed out many times uh, every one of their games has been a tight game and most of them have gone against them right. so i think that uh, uh the demeanor was an interesting thing to see of both teams on the sidelines mm. all right so here we go again for florida tech i mean a tie tonight would eventually would evidently clinch a spot in the sunshine state conference tournament but Florida Tech wants to get two wins tonight and Tuesday against Rollins, and that way they improve their chances for a home playoff game. Uh, first round affair in the Sunshine State Conference Tournament, which is going to begin a, a week from Monday. But they have to figure out how to solve this Tampa club first before they worry about Rollins on Tuesday. Again, the Spartans just kind of laying out the string. They cannot make the tournament this year. So Spartans have the balls. We get underway in this second half. Comes back to uh, Torre. Again, Oslo, Norway born, but has also lived in Togo, Africa. Trying to get the ball out is Nichols. Here's McCall going up for a header. Now it comes to uh, Becker. And now Demiru with it for Florida Tech, far side of the field. Eichlin, a long ball sent up ahead, looking to connect with McCall. And now Tampa take it, takes it away. Spartans with it on the far side. They send it back to midfield, and I guess we got it offside. <clears throat> it looks like the uh, assistant referee said the ball just uh, had rolled out of bounds on the, uh, on the play there. As, yeah, Wheatley's over there for the throw-in. So Tampa player tried to keep it in. It's a shame he didn't from Tampa's perspective because he found a player in lots of space. High ball, and this one's going to go out. And let's see, Tampa's going to have a uh, throw in. Again, the Spartans won the game last year over in Tampa 3 2. Again, they've won the last three in the series. Again, Tampa, three national championships in their uh, history. They've, they've spread them out quite a bit. First one was in 1981. Ball goes out of bounds again. Adrian Bush, the head coach, was also a player for Tampa, and he has one. He has one national title as a player, and that was in the mid '90s. He's a '95 grad. All right, Tampa back on uh, defense here. It's uh, Torre. Torre pass to Nichols, and this one goes out of bounds right near us. 
as Rosary was battling for the ball with uh, Nichols, and Nichols going to throw it in for the uh, Spartans. Uh, Nichols, a local product, Tampa, Berkeley Prep. He throws it in. High ball, Rosary battling for the ball with a header. Gets it to McCall. And actually, that's not McCall, that's Lopez. And now to Marcos. Marcos in the crowd. Curls a shot in, and it goes over the net. He's trying to hit the uh, upper corner there, mm -hmm. but uh, hooked it over the net. We've seen a couple of goals from him from there. Usually he had a little bit more time. It looked like he was leaning back just a little bit, and I think that's why you saw, you saw the ball uh, sky up a little bit more than he usually does when he's on that uh, uh, trying, trying to curl one into the back post. Mm. Really poor defending, though, from uh, Toure, uncharacteristic. He tried to back heel the ball, and instead it hit Lopez and went to Marco. So uh, almost a costly mistake there from Toure. All right, so Florida Tech throw in way on the other side, and uh, Wheatley was going to take the uh, throw in, but surrenders it, I think, to Demiru. Comes into Wheatley to Demiru, and I guess it went out off of Demiru. Tampa throw in. Uh, again, Tampa, they've lost five of their last six. Again, tough loss for them a week ago against Lynn. Uh, three to two. Again, Florida Tech coming off a, uh, a loss to Lynn as well by one goal. All right, uh, Wheatley chips it up ahead looking for Rosary. Deflected by the Spartans. There's a shot. Oh, right on goal. That was a bullet, and Richards made the save. Didn't yeah, quite see who took that. It was a good effort there by Lopez. He got Lopez that half yard it. of space and just cracked it. Uh, fortunately, it didn't take a bad bounce. So usually a striker wants to get that bounce right in front of the goalie. He got it, uh, but no no uh, unfortunate bounces there for F Florida Tech. Well, I'll tell you, Richards was in perfect position. That was a bullet, and he got his full body in front of it. Now it comes back to Richards. He clears it back out to Torre. Torre with some operating room gets it up to a midfield to Becker. Now uh, Newman with it, trying to get it back to Becker, but it's uh, sent back to midfield. Spartans send a ball in, top of the 18-yard box, deflected by the Panthers. Panthers trying to get it out. Battle the eights, uh, Newman and Marcos. Newman has it. Now Newman gets it back. And you hear the uh, Tampa sideline urging uh, the players to keep the ball in game possession here. All right, comes over to uh, Nichols. Nichols being very careful, sends the middle of the field. And that deflected out of bounds by Florida Tech. Tampa throwing. So we're little more than five minutes into the second half and again Tampa with a one nothing lead on the goal by Fernandez there's a shot that goes way off the mark and uh, it'll be a goal kick for Fesque and yeah, not a great effort there it looked like it was uh, Travis Foster on the shot Roysland Florida Tech sends it up to midfield Marcos trying to get it to Rosary Rosary trying to run this one down he'll settle it Let's see if he tries to cross it. He does. There's a shot to save. Here comes a possible rebound. Shot deflected. Oh, Florida Tech almost had a good chance there. Ball goes out of bounds. Again, another opportunity there through Rosary with that speed and that good right foot. Ball thrown in by Gautier. Florida Tech trying to keep the pressure on, and now Tampa sends a very high ball to midfield. Roislin with about a 20-yard header up the field, but now comes back into the Panther end. Eichlin, a high header. Tamiru getting bumped off the ball, trying to get it back, does so. But out of bounds to Tampa. And let's see, the official blew the whistle, so we're going to have a little discussion here. Looks like he's saying yellow card for the left back for Florida Tech to Mayru. We, uh -oh. we couldn't see what happened from here. It must have been uh, maybe he kicked the ball away or said a bad word or something. Uh -huh. it, it looks like maybe the... Uh, Again, Mystery Theater. That's right. Well, now the two coaches, Robin Shan and uh, 
Coach Bush are going to have a chat. They're, uh, they're, they're good friends. They actually played against each other, I guess, yeah, way sa- back when. It seems like they're sharing grievances of these uh, so. these these yellow cards being uh, tossed around. So they, they got a mutual respect for each other, which is good. Boy, some coaches can't stand each other, can they? That's right. You know. These guys seem. These guys are friends, like you Pro- said. Yeah. Probably Harbaugh and Urban Meyer are great <laughs> friends. You know, Ohio State and Michigan. So that'll be coming up in a few weeks. Now the crowd's starting to get into it. Sent up ahead. What's wrong? <laughs> oh, we got an injury for Tampa. Forrest Faker getting very emotional <laughs> here on the broadcast. Well, we saw Iguez. He had the ball, and he looked like he saw uh, the right back Gautier getting up. Up the field, up the right side with loads of space. Uh, unfortunately, the pass didn't connect, but it was finally the kind of movements that we were talking about in the first half. We were seeing them take place. It just, the pass couldn't quite come off. Well, I'll tell you, being the former player you are, you get real emotional and they don't execute quite. Oh, uh, right, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're not on the field, it's a lot easier to say what people should be doing than when you're on the field. Of course, everything's happening like a million miles an hour faster. Be a part of the action right now, huh? but oh the yeah, eligibility is gone. Yeah, it's so gone. You can't, it's you can't gone. do it. <laughs> hey, we got to get an alum- alumni game going. You would play in that, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. They usually have those in the spring. Going right now, in the spring they usually happen. Yeah, I like to come out for that and see you back in the field. So. All right, so injured player by Tampa doesn't look terribly serious, but he's going to exit the uh, field. Let's see, what number is that? That's, uh, that's number 10, and that's uh, Tony uh, Soler. He's got a yellow card. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And he's been a very important player for them. He's the guy who seems to have the experience, and when uh, the Tampa coach, uh, Bush, wants Tampa to keep possession, he's usually the guy who puts his foot on the ball, stays calm, and starts to uh, possess the ball with his teammates. So that kind of experience is really valuable for the Tampa Spartans. Well, again, Soler out of Valencia, Spain. I'll tell you, if you ever want to go to Spain and go to the right place for fruit, Valencia has, like, the greatest oranges around. They are known for their fruits. Sent up to midfield. Again, I took a trip to Spain in 82 and really learned a lot about the country. So there you go. All right, with it is uh, Becker. Becker circling. Drops back to his uh, teammate. That's Soler. So Soler is okay. He actually stayed in the game. Here's Torre, pass up the middle to Foster. So Foster with it, goes uh, left side to Nichols, and Nichols takes a tumble, and that's a Florida Tech foul, looks like. Yeah, not a good area to concede a foul there, as uh, it looks like the first touch there by Nichols wasn't very good. Florida Tech would have kept the ball and kind of bailed him out uh, by clipping it, by clipping his heel. All right, so a kick here for Tampa by Soler. Hooks it far side of the uh, 18-yard box. Uh, I believe that's Torre trying to chase it down. He does so. Torre trying to make a move. Nice physical affair here. I think that's Marcos, right? Okay. <laughs> a nice clean exchange there and uh, works out in Florida Tech's favor. Goal kick for Fesque. Yep, uncharacteristic. We had a center back in a very attacking position and a center forward playing defense there. So, uh, interesting little battle. We are nine minutes into the second half. Again, Tampa holding on to a one nothing lead, and we got a Panther player on the ground writhing in pain. And now there'll be a stoppage, and that does not look very good. The Tampa, the uh, Florida Tech trainer is going to go out and have a chat with him. Yeah, it looked like he just came down, you know, normally. He does that 100 times a game. And uh, couldn't tell if, like, maybe his ankle went or his calf or something. But uh, it did not sound good there for Guillermo Marcos. It looks like oh, he's showing Marcos. his Achilles wow. tendon. Maybe oh, maybe he got his – it looks like he's saying uh, the Tampa player came down the back of his calf, which can be really painful, but, you know – there was there was nothing intentional happening. Two people jumping in the well, air I hope and not. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he seems to be okay though. Not a, not nearly as bad as it sounded. Uh, but we hope at least, you know. So Marcos is going to come out at least temporarily. In the meantime, for Tampa, uh, Jan Walker, who had the assist on the Fernandez goal, is uh, back in the game. So we'll miss. Uh, 
Marcos is booming leg at least for now. Hopefully he'll be able to get back in. Well, it looks like Marcos might be able to come in sooner than we thought. All right, Florida Tech with a kick here. And kind of a courtesy kick as they uh, send back to the uh, goalkeeper. Again, that is, uh, that is Jake Richards. Again, Richards has one shutout this year. Looking for a second. Florida Tech hoping to deny him that opportunity. Here's Wheatley with a header. McCall with a header. Both teams trying to control the ball. And here comes Tampa with some momentum. And this one's sent out to midfield by Florida Tech. And this one's going to go out right near Robin Chan. And Tampa throwing right in front of Chan. Throwing in is, is Ezra Nichols. Oh, the big guy about to check back in. Uh, Pierre Henrik Nag. Boy, he, he is really tall. As we got a foul on uh, Florida Tech. And Roislin is preaching to the choir. And of course, he has to be careful. Doesn't want to get a yellow. But I'll tell you, can you imagine Nag and Wheatley like standing next to each other? What, what, what an imposing presence they would be. That's right. Boy, Nag, I mean, he's not very far away from us. He is, he's got quite the body. All right, Tampa with a kick here. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be Baize taking the kick. Sends it top of the 18-yard box into a crowd of people. Lopez trying to get to the ball. Tampa taking it away. Lopez battling for it. And here come the Panthers. Wheatley is running the far side. Also, uh, Rosary. And now Wheatley has it. And uh, Wheatley jumps over a player. There's a pass uh, to the middle, top of the 18-yard box. And we got a foul on Tampa, I believe. And let's see if we have something more. That was 16, uh, Biza. Getting a lot of chirping going on out there. Uh, evidently no yellow card, and we don't want to see a lot of yellow out here. All right, McCall, transfer Eastern Florida State. We'll take a kick here. Modest two-person wall, sends it over the wall. And coming out, Richards making the play. Really strong goalkeeping there from Richards. As there was a Florida Tech player, I think it was Roycelyn, just making contact with him to make it difficult, and he had no problem dealing with that. Long, booming kick sent up to Becker. This one will stay in. Comes to Rosary. Rosary, nice slip pass to uh, Eguez, he lost it, Tampa takes it back. There's a shot deflected by Demiru. Into a crowd, there's a shot that'll be off net and gobbled up by Fesque. Still plenty of time for Florida Tech, 32-32 to go in regulation, again a one nothing Tampa lead. <coughs> Comes up to midfield. Trying to connect with Rosary was Lopez. Lopez now gets the ball back. <clears throat> Drops back to Eguez. Eguez to Demiru. Now to Wheatley. A little give and go. Looking to get it to Demiru. Running the far side. And it goes over the goal line. Demiru is going to get up. He got upset a little bit. And corner kick. Looks like a corner for Florida Tech. They'll be their first of the second half. And now Nag and Campanini will come in for the Panthers. And good timing there for uh, Robin Chan and Ryan Moon as they're able to get two six foot three plus guys in for this corner kick. Two really big bodies in for Craig McCall and, uh, and Guillermo Marcos. Now Nag, as usual, will be in the middle of this <laughs> corner kick uh, inside the 18 yard box. There's a header. There's a shot to goal. So Florida Tech has tied it up right on the doorstep. The Panthers score 31-27 on the second half clock. We're tied at one. And it looked like on the goal there was Mikel Roycelin as uh, the ball was knotted at the front post. It just kind of trickled into the back post in the air. And uh, Roycelin was there, rose highest and strongest, and was able to get it into the back of the net. Not the prettiest goal, but they count the same. Yeah. Let's see, who took the corner kick? 
Uh, I believe on the corner kick was Luca Campanini. So is that going to be an assist? It would be uh, Luca Campanini, but I think it was headed on by Perrin Rick Nag. So I think oh, he would be the guy to get the assist there. Uh, Nag the assist on the Roysland goal, and uh, Florida Tech has uh, tied it up. So we are tied at uh, one. Roysland, his uh, fourth goal of the year. So brand new game, 1-1. One, one. Tampa trying to respond. Tampa trying to come right back to Myru defending. Tampa with the ball close to the net. And we got a foul, Florida Tech. Let's see if we have some more. The clock stoppage. Uh, we'll see if we get some yellow on this. I didn't get a good view of it at all. So. Yeah, it was a really a poor tackle, a poor yeah. and unnecessary tackle there by Sol Wheatley as uh, as the defender, as the Tampa player was passing the ball back to his teammate. Uh, Wheatley tried to make a last ditch effort to get to the ball, and what happens is that foot's the only thing left there, and it looked like Wheatley just in landed with his big powerful body right on that uh, Tampa player's ankle. So yellow card Wheatley. I think we're two two in yellow cards, if I remember right. And this is a really dangerous area for a free kick when Tampa gets all their big bodies up the field. All right, so Tampa will have a kick here on the side. It's not a corner kick, but it's kind of a short version of a corner kick. Uh, Panthers with a, I think that's a two-person wall, or maybe three. Just a tap pass. There's a shot, save, and it goes wide, and that was... Uh, that was saved by... Uh, Looked like DeMiro was on the save right there. DeMiro? Okay. Yeah, the quick reactions from him. I, I think Fesque might have been behind him <laughs> to save it, but you don't take chances like that. Mm. So really good defending there from him. And another set play that we saw there, they didn't try to kick it in like a corner kick. They played it on the ground for a guy coming in for the shot. So good job from Tampa. They've been working on their set plays also. All right, Nag battling for the ball. We got a foul on uh, Nag. So Tampa will have it. So 30.05 to go in regulation. Again, we're tied at one. And, of course, if we're tied at the end of regulation, two 10-minute overtimes, but uh, that's not guaranteed. Again, golden goal will be in effect. Otherwise, we'd be at it till midnight if we played the full uh, extent. <laughs> well, not midnight, but maybe 9.30. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens there. All right, running the left side is uh, Becker. And gets knocked out. Becker will throw it in for the uh, Spartans. Uh, Becker out of uh, Germany. And they have a good bunch of players. Six out of Germany, two out of Spain. And the Spartans will have a, a throw in here. Again, 21 international players. Six Germany, two England, two Spain, two Norway, one Trinidad, two Uruguay, one Paraguay. And the list goes on. Panthers clear it up to midfield. Trying to run it down is Nag. But Tampa sends it right back in. Panthers trying to clear it out. Spartans doing a pretty good job keeping it in. With it is uh, Becker. Top of the 18-yard box. Spartans looking to get a shot off. Loose ball. Header by Becker. Becker shot, deflected. Boy, Campanini took that in the body. Looks like he's okay, though. Here's a long shot by Tampa. Actually, it was a pass. Here's another pass. Tampa trying to uh, cross it and take it away by Wheatley. So Tampa applying some pressure. Couldn't really get anything off, though. Wheatley flying up the left side. Has a lot of operating room. Gets it to Campanini doing a 360 spin. That got the crowd uh, rising a little bit. And the uh, Panther bench is screaming for a foul. Panthers have it, though. That's 18. That's uh, Gautier. And it goes far side out of bounds. Uh, Tampa throwing. And there was a lot of dribbling, good actions with dribbling there for Florida Tech. But there wasn't a lot of movement off the ball to provide options for the guys dribbling. Great work from Campanini and Gautier. In, in the way that they were dribbling the ball, but they need a little support from their teammates. Well, again, we got uh, got Bino Campanini on the PA, and of course, when Luca has the ball, he gets a little little more excited. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I'll tell you, I think he enjoyed that 360 spin move. It was, it was a great move. Yeah. 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 
just like the old man. All right, comes back. OTA can't control it, and this one is going to go out. It was out. It should have been out, yeah. So Florida Tech throwing. All right, so throw in here for uh, Gautier. Again, he's out of uh, France, a transfer from Spring Hill College in Alabama. So Gautier to uh, throw it in here. Gautier will backtrack it to Roisland. <clears throat> Roisland will go across in front of the uh, goal mouth to uh, Eichlin. Far side. And now Egues has it back to Eichlin. Panthers have to be careful here. Tampa applying some pressure. Quick passing. Uh, Wheatley with it. Now the Panthers send it up to midfield. Awaiting the balls. Becker, a header. Trying to connect with his teammate. Up at top of the 18-yard box. We got a collision there and a foul on Tampa. And we got a Panther player down. I tell you, we've had probably two or three players for each team who have uh, taken some hard knocks and gone to the ground. We got a yellow card. I, I think he didn't give the yellow card for the original foul. I think he gave the yellow card for the petulance after that. Petulance. I mean, very good. Yeah, he just he just elbowed Roycelin. It was a pretty easy, uh, a, a simple foul. But the uh, but Fernandez just he just started screaming and you know smashing pots and pans, and the referee <laughs> uh, gives him the yellow card. You know, I substitute teach. I have to deal with some petulant <laughs> students from time to time, so I, I like that word. That's right. Ball goes out of bounds. That was Fernandez. We got the yellow. Again, he's got the only uh, Tampa goal. And, again, Roisland scored for Florida Tech here in the second half to knot things up at one. So, again, play getting a bit physical. A couple of yellow cards. Actually, three for Tampa, two for Florida Tech, if I'm right on that. All right, Spartans in transition here. Left side, Becker has some room. Becker going one-on-one. -on -one. There's a pass. And let's see. Taken away. And the Tampa bench is screaming for a foul. And that could have been a penalty kick, I guess. It was within 18 yards. I, I think the uh, Tampa bench is as confused as I am. I haven't seen that play at all. It looked like Roycelyn just put his chest on top of the ball to prevent the Tampa player from doing anything about it. I don't know. Uh, what were they screaming about, though? I, just a, a maybe a handball, maybe a, you know, dangerous play. I'm not really wow. sure. It's just bizarre. And the ball goes out of bounds. Again, the two infractions for penalty kicks, either handballs or, mm -hmm. or tripping somebody. Yeah. I guess. It, yeah, it looked like something was wrong, but I don't, I can't, I can't put my finger on <laughs> what, and I think the Tampa bench felt the same way. Okay, Adrian Constantine is going to check in here in a moment. I don't think he's played yet tonight. He's going to... Oh. And it's 21 oh. Okay, we get an update on the Panthers sports front here in a minute. There's a shot, and it's going to be cleared out. There's another shot, and it goes wide, and uh, uh, Florida Tech's going to get a corner kick here. Looks like uh, Campanini's going to take it. Yeah, it was a good effort there from Campanini. It looked like he had dragged it wide, but Richards wasn't sure, so he got another strong hand on it and plays it out for a Florida Tech corner kick. Uh, quick sports update over in Tampa, 1-1 with women's soccer. And Florida Tech football creeping a little bit closer to West Florida. They're down 21-17. Again, that game was delayed due to weather, so this is sent toward the net. And what do we got? A foul Florida Tech, it looks like. Yeah, the, uh, the referee is there to protect the keepers, uh, first and foremost, on corner kicks. And it looked like Roycelyn made a little contact with the keeper, Richards. Uh, when, when the goalkeeper is looking up at the ball, uh, you're not supposed to be running into him like that. And I think it was a pretty straightforward call from the official. So 23-45 to go. We're just about at the midway point in another minute or so. Adrian Constantine of Tampa still looking to check in here. And checking in for Florida Tech will be Abram Murphy when time permits. All right, Tampa controlling the game of their own. Again, a 1-1 tie. 23-25 to go. All right, comes back to Richards in goal. Richards living a little... Dangerously, jeez. <laughs> As it goes uh, far side, Tampa looking to clear it out of their own end. Oh, 
Sent up to midfield. Spartans working toward the middle. Goes left side. That's uh, Becker. Becker going one-on-one. -on -one. There's a shot. Oh, beautiful save by Fesque. You know, if he doesn't make that save, it might have gone wide. We'll never know. But uh, great diving save there. Yeah, great job. And it just it made it so there were no rebound opportunities the way he caught it for Tampa. Yeah. And uh, as, as there were a couple of on-running, on-rushing Tampa players hoping to get on the end of that as well. All right, with it is Solaire. Again, keep in mind he's got uh, one of the three yellow cards for Tampa, so he can't afford anything else. Far side of the field, Tampa looking to make a run. Wheatley running with the Tampa player. Here's a cross. Loose. And Florida Tech fortunately clears it out to midfield. Here's Nag trying to settle the ball. Here comes the triple team. Well, actually, it's a double team. Panther crowd reacting. Nag comes away with the ball. There's a shot. Save by Richards. Oh, it was great, great play there. Great uh, hold-up play from Nag as he's able to win the ball back quickly after being shortly dispossessed. And then I couldn't see who took the shot. Who it was uh, Lopez was the one Lopez, who okay. uh, got to take the opportunity. All right, here's Becker. He's uh, controlled the ball quite a bit tonight. Trying to find a teammate. He does. There's a shot, but it goes off the side of the net. Really great play there from uh, Julius Becker as he's able to do a nice little move, kind of freeze the entire defense and create an opportunity for number eight, uh, Till Newman. All right, one player checking in for each team, uh, Adrian Constantine, a Santa Cruz Trinidad player, and Abra Murphy for Florida Tech. Again, Murphy, a uh, West Shore graduate here in Brevard County and uh, residents of Melbourne Beach. Long punt by Fesque. Connects with Nag. I think Nag was looking for a foul. Nothing called. Now it comes to Demeru. Demeru dribbling it up the far side. We got a Tampa player who's hurt. Demeru centers it. And this one's going to go out of bounds. But I tell you, I talked to Adrian Bush before the game. He came over, had a great chat with him. And he said, yeah, we just had too many injuries. And he's had a few more tonight. And this looks like a cramp. Oh, look at the Panther player trying to help the Tampa player out. That's nice. It does, yeah. and ah, that's, that's classy by us. It really is. So it is a cramp, which isn't deadly, but it's just painful. Oh, yeah. Do those <laughs> oh, <like>. yeah. <laughs> those, those. I don't think it's going to kill you, but you're just an mm. exhilarating pain. That's I mean. right. Oh. Oh, good job by the Panther player to try and help the Tampa player out. Yeah, but once you get, once you get that first cramp in soccer, it's... It's not something you really recover from because, you know, you can take the electrolytes and you can drink the Gatorade, but yeah. uh, once that cramp happens, uh, usually it'll, it'll happen again after just a few more minutes of running. So mm. that might be the end of, uh, of Newman's night. So that's Till Newman. Hopefully not, too, because he's, he's played really well. He's been, he's been a fun, fun, fun one to watch for well, the again, Spartans. You know, I printed out the boxes for the last three games, and Newman, he might have been hurt was not in the box. He's Again, he's out of uh, Germany. So he'll come out. We'll see if he comes back in. We still have 20 minutes to go. Again, we're in a 1-1 tie. Again, J.C. Byrolds and Forrest Figured from Rick Stoller Field on the campus of Florida Tech. Next to last home regular season game. Again, we're back out here Tuesday for our good friends from Winter Park, the Rollins College Chars. <laughs> I know Forrest misses, misses playing in those games. Oh, yeah. Sent toward the net. I'll tell you, they've had some memorable games over the years. Some of them have been in the Sunshine State Conference Tournament, where in some years we've had to go up and play in that band box known mm -hmm. as the Sandspur Bowl. Ugh. Not one of your favorite fields? No. no. Uh, actually, I always really liked playing there. Oh, you liked playing there? Okay. But it was, it was always one that you got up for a little bit more because uh, the fans are right up on you. and I can handle the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so Smith with it. So, yeah, we hope uh, – Hope everybody comes out on Tuesday. If you're not, we will have the broadcast Tuesday at 7. And then the Panthers will wait around and try and get healthy, and we'll figure out the conference tournament for the following week. All right, here's uh, Ramsey Torre. Gives it to Solaire. 
Soler very carefully will send it to uh, Constantine. Goes far side. Constantine gets the ball back, working against McCall. Goes up ahead. It's going to go over the goal line. This will be a uh, goal kick for Fesquay. Uh, not much touch on that final pass. It looked like he had a an on-running teammate in lots of space, but just put too much on it. And there was no, nothing slowing that straight ball down. So Fesquay barking out instructions. They'll kick this off the grass with the right foot and sends a boomer about 60 yards up the field looking for Nag. Headed, though, by Tampa. Spartans go into a slide trying to control the ball, and uh, with it is uh, that's uh, Murphy. Murphy drops back. Campanini. Luca sends it to his teammate, and we got a foul on Tampa. That was uh, Lopez who went down, so foul for the Spartans. Yeah, really good feet there from Lopez. As he kept the touch really, his first touch really close to his body. The defender thought he could uh, get in and nick it, but you know immediately takes an extra touch, draws the foul. All right, Campanini with a kick here, good 30 yards out. Tampa is going to form a wall. Oh, one of the Panther players trying to uh, trying to join that wall. So we got four Spartans and three, uh, well, now we got four Spartans and three uh, Panther players on the wall. There's a shot. That's a goal. <laughs> Campanini got it over the wall <laughs> and passed Richards and the Panther bench is going crazy. Oh, Two my gosh. Attack. What an outstanding goal. He's able to get it above the wall and underneath the crossbar and right up in the corner against the keeper in Jake Richards, who's played absolutely outstanding tonight. So really, really impressive there from Campanini. And, uh, that'll be unassisted, I guess. That'll be an unassisted yeah, okay. goal, and that one will be on his highlight video for sure. That was a great goal right in front of uh, Bino Campanini at the PA. I bet Bino's pretty happy right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about the celebration going to the corner flag when all the fans are at the at the midway mark. Yeah. But that's nitpicking. You know, we'll take the goal and, you know, we'll work on the celebration. All right, so Luca Campanini scores his uh, seventh goal of the year. Again, he's behind uh, Nags 10, so he's second in goals on the team. So Florida Tech has scored their 31st and 32nd goals as a team, and they now lead it. 2-1, to one. still 17.35 to go. Plenty of time for Tampa to try and get the equalizer. So the Panthers trailed 1-0. They tied it at 1, and now they lead it 2-1. to one. But uh, Tampa, they are not going to go away. With it is Nichols. Nichols trying to get by Murphy, and we got a foul on Murphy. You can't quite believe the call. Coach Moon is uh, voicing his opinion. Yeah, they're not happy. Uh, you got the attackers back to goal, and if you can see the foul like that, then Tampa gets all their men forward, and they have a good opportunity to score. What uh, Murphy should have done as a as a freshman not knowing this is just let the guy play it backwards. Mm. All right, so Lair with a kick here, about 35 yards out, sends the top of the 18-yard box, comes back out. With it for the Spartans is uh, Becker. Becker's going to reorganize things. Sends it to the far side. And nice knock away. That's uh, Campanini, who just scored the goal, up for Wheatley. Wheatley flying up the far side of the field. Lopez going toward the net. And uh, Wheatley has it stuffed out beautifully by a defender for the uh, Spartans. Panthers trying to get the ball back, just shy of midfield. And the Spartans have it. 16-20 to go, 2-1. Florida Tech. And that's the second or third time Wheatley's got the ball in a lot of space on a counter, and he's not really looking to find a teammate or anything. He just puts his head down and dribbles. And Tampa's done a good job of corralling that type of attack. Solaire up over the midfield line. Finds uh, Smith. Smith circling. We'll drop it back to Nichols. And Nichols back for uh, Torre. Torre will send it to his uh, teammate on the far side. That's... Uh, I think that's Hovat. And Tampa with it far side of the field. Again, we can't see anything. Send up ahead. And the ball goes out of bounds. All right, Travis Foster is going to check in for Tampa in a few minutes. So Tampa throw in far side, sent toward the net, kind of past the net. Panthers have it, trying to clear it. Comes up for Murphy. He's got some operating room. 
right in front of us here at Press Row. Murphy looking to connect with Nag. And this one will go past Nag. It'll be picked up by Richards. Yeah, Murphy probably should have made that pass into Nag's feet two or three touches earlier. Instead, uh, Nag had already completed his run. And it uh, goes safely back to the Jake Richards in goal. Uh, Adrian Bush coming up and uh, talking to one of his players. is going to check in. Again, he is... Uh, he is Tampa True Blue, again, former player, former assistant coach, now the head coach. He's kind of been affiliated with the program for well, probably about 25 years, early 90s to the present. All right, here's uh, Smith trying to make a run, trying to get around Murphy. And ball knocked out by Florida Tech by uh, Gautier, and this should be a corner kick. So corner kick, and Roger Smith is going to take it. Uh, He's out of Portmore, Jamaica. Sounds like a beautiful part of the planet. And uh, Till Newman came back onto the field here for Tampa, the guy who had the cramp earlier. So. Oh, good for Newman. He's a good player. Glad to see him back in. Here's Becker with a cross, but he goes past the net. And let's see, Campanini trying to chase it down before it goes out. He's got it, but taken away. Ball along the goal line. Comes back out. There's a shot and a save by Fesquay. Quite, not quite sure who took that, but that was a bullet. It looks like a great cross played in for Becker there for Tampa, but Tampa didn't have numbers in the box, which is shocking when you're down by a goal and only 14 minutes remaining. So mm. uh, Florida Tech caught a break, and then there was a good save from Fesquay mixed in there. Long punt by Fesquay, trying to connect with Nag. Now Wheatley has it far side. Tampa trying to control it in midfield. They have it. Long pass up ahead, but nowhere near Smith. And it'll come all the way back to Fesque, who quickly picks up the ball and then falls to the ground, trying to secure it. A little bit wasteful there from Solaris. He's usually been pinpointing his passing today, but that one, uh, they're taking chances now, so some of them are going to look a little ugly. Nice little kick there by Nag. Connects with Lopez. Nag goes toward the net. Wheatley the trailer. The shot uh, deflected. Nice block there by the Spartans. Comes back to Gautier. Gautier pass, looking for Murphy. Can he catch up to it? He keeps it in. Murphy looking to make an inside move. Drops back, Gautier. There's a shot by Campanini, not really toward the net. Comes back out. Tampa trying to get it out of their end. And here they come over the midfield line. Panthers quickly getting back. Left side, Roger Smith trying to get around uh, Eguez, does so. Chip toward the net. Little bicycle kick, and oh, that's a goal. <laughs> what an outstanding goal there by, by Newman. So it looks like the hamstring's feeling better. What a f amazing goal. Ro uh, Roger Smith beats two Florida Tech players. It looked like he first beat uh, Duan Eguez, who was trying to recover. And then Roisling came over to take his chance. Roisling couldn't stop him. Clips the ball in to Till Newman, who just chested up to himself. And then a beautifully executed that bicycle Newman kick. The goal, huh? Oh, yeah. It was Newman on the goal, assisted by Roger Smith. Really outstanding play from those so two call, players. So call that a bicycle kick, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I know sometimes they call it a scissors kick, too. But. So the scissor kick is more from the side. Oh, this okay. one was uh, it was straight in front of him, and the kick went behind him. So, so that would be that more of a bicycle, a bicycle kick. That was a bicycle kick goal right near the post. <laughs> Hasn't been a bicycle kick goal in a Florida Tech-Tampa game since Nick Robinson in 2010. Oh, you remember that, huh? Oh, yeah. That was about eight years ago. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're tied at two, and now we got possible overtime staring us in the face, but still 11.45 to go, so this turned into quite a game. Again, Tampa led 1-0. Florida Tech tied it, led 2-1, and now Tampa's come back. A lot of resiliency to tie it up. Here's Lopez trying to catch up to the ball, but uh, comes out to Richards. So, again, Newman getting that last goal, and that's his third of the year. And I'll tell you what, that bicycle kick, it wasn't just cool. It was also right in the corner. Fesquay had no chance at that. You see those really late because... Uh, All right, we got oh, a, It looks uh, like it did run out of bounds there for uh, okay. for Demero. So goal kick for uh, Tampa. You want to finish that thought, though? Yeah, 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 those bicycle kicks. Yeah. 
the goalie doesn't see it until the last second. Mm. So all you need to do is make it on goal because your body's shielding the ball from the goalie. Yeah, yeah. So those good. come at you really quick, and it was also in the corner. So Fesque, who's done a great job today, had no chance at making that save. Well, I'll tell you, I remember seeing vintage highlights of Pele in the early 70s for Brazil doing those bicycle kicks. Oh, yeah. He, he's, he, he made it look pretty easy, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he sure did. You know, probably the greatest <laughs> player of all time, but it's up to debate, I guess. I think he's better than Ronaldo, but you might get some uh, debate there. All right, here's Wheatley. Wheatley trying to make a run. Nice smothering there by Tampa on defense. Wheatley trying to come back for the ball. Sends it far side. Tampa takes it away. <laughs> so here come the Spartans. We got 10-10 to go. Spartans with about a three on four here. Comes to Smith. Smith going one on one. Trying to get around Gautier. Boy, he's got some quick moves. Smith. Oh, look at Smith. Boy, he dances the ball with, it, with his feet. Boy, uh, goes over the goal line. Wow. So He's worth the price of admission, Roger Smith. Oh, he's been fantastic, especially these last five minutes. He's been electrifying. I watching him with the <laughs> ball. It's just really quick. And he's extremely hard. It was well done from Gautier there to make it so his life was difficult. But once, he, once Smith enters the box for Florida Tech, it's much harder to defend him because you can't foul at that point. Otherwise, it's a penalty right, kick. Right, right. All right, punt by Fesque. Uh, Nag going up for the kick, for the, for the header, and got a foul on uh, Tampa. Yep. The uh, Tampa bench doesn't quite agree with that call. Well, it was well spotted by the referee as uh, and Nichols went up for the header, and his it actually came down and hit his arm. Mm. 12. Uh, so good eye there from the referee. 12, will you come in for uh, Stian Olsen's going to check in, native out of Norway in a moment. And uh, McCall's also going to check back in for Florida Tech, but they're going to have to wait. Here's a kick by Campanini. Sends it far side of the 18-yard box. There's a header. And it comes loose, and Tampa's going to be able to clear it. Pass up over the midfield line. Campanini intercepts. Roy's Lynch hitting it up ahead. Nag is going to try and run it down. Can we get, get David and Goliath here as uh, Nag goes flying out of bounds? And that was kind of the long and the short of things. Nag towering over his uh, Tampa defender. Well done from Nag to keep the ball deep in Tampa's end as now Florida Tech can get it across the field and work uh, to get in a good pressing position here. Try and win the ball back in Tampa's territory. All right, Tampa's going to throw it in. Loose ball. Gautier sends a high ball. Now another high ball by Tampa. And this one's going to go out of bounds. Look out. <laughs> the ball comes near us. So throw in here. And let's see. McCall's going to check in along with Olsen. And let's see. Checking out uh, Campanini. Oh, no. Eguez. I'm sorry. Eguez checking out. <laughs> So Wheatley throw in right in front of head coach uh, Robin Chan. Chan, by the way, up to date, 106, 97, and 21. This is uh, 14th year as head coach for the Panthers. Okay, Nag in a crowd has to take it away. Wheatley applying some pressure. And I'll tell you, Wheatley forced that turnover. Beautifully done. He now throws it in. High throw in looking for Nag. Loose ball. And the Panther bench is screaming for something. They they can't believe it. Yeah, Toure's arms were out when that when that throw in was taken. It hits off his elbow. Oh. And the entire Panthers bench saw it. They wanted a penalty kick there. Oh boy, I'll tell you. All right, loose ball midfield, and this is gonna come all the way back, and we gotta get some foul on Tampa. I tell you what, there are there are a lot of referees. You never really know with referees. Some will call that and some won't, but uh I think the Spartans are a little bit lucky there to not have a penalty kick called as the defender's arms were well outside of his, uh, what they call normal, you know, position. Again, uh, Coach Moon and Coach Chan getting the odometer going. <laughs> Pacing the sideline. And Adrian Bush with a little, <laughs> little bit of commentary. <laughs> All right, loose ball. And what do we got? Uh, foul Florida Tech, I guess. 
All right, so we're going to have a goal kick, it looks like, for Richards. 15. All right, Hugo Lopez is going to check in uh, in a minute. 5.50 to go. We're tied at two. Again, two 10-minute overtimes possible if uh, we end uh, regulation in a tie. Again, golden goal in effect. 15. 15 already came off. All right, Richards with a goal kick. You will uh, kick it off the grass with the right foot and sends a boomer. Good 70 yards up the field. Loose ball, and Fesque will come out and gobble it up. And Fesque, I thought he was going to do the sidewinder kick, but instead rolls it out for Eichlin to Demiru. Panthers being very careful there. Tampa applying some light pressure. Comes back for Gautier. Gautier, a little slip pass to Campanini, but uh, his pass intercepted by the Spartans. Oh, here comes Mr. Smith. Smith, boy, what moves. <laughs> he is something to watch. Outside, Spartans still with it. Ball drifts out toward midfield. They're a good 40 yards from net. Now over to Nichols. Oh, boy, we got some exciting fronts going on with the other sports, so over in Tampa, again, uh, we play opposite sites in Tampa. Panther women are uh, leading Tampa 2-1. And Florida Tech football's taking the lead 23-21 uh, over West Florida. Boy, I bet, I bet Jerry Journey's going crazy on the broadcast. All right, let's see. Tampa's going to have the ball here on the side. Down to 4-10 to go. And this is a white knuckler. We are tied at 2. Again, a really important game for Florida Tech as they hope to get a first-round tournament game in about uh, nine days. If they're going to get that first-round game, they probably have to win this one and also beat Rollins on a Tuesday night. Here's a long ball sent to out of bounds. See, like Jake Richards has some really good feet. That's like the third or fourth time he's p paying the perfect diagonal ball. That one, well, not quite perfect, just over the head of his intended target. But uh, he doesn't miss hit many of those, and it's a pretty impressive thing considering he's a goalkeeper. All right, ball sent over the midfield line, and this one goes out right in front of Robin Chan, who gets his hands on the ball. And he'll hand it to the Tampa player. That's uh, Ek uh, Nichols. Nichols uh, gets it into uh, Soler. Now to Constantine. Uh, over to Newman. Now back Constantine in midfield, right on the midfield line. 2.52 to go. Will we have a winner in regulation or will we have to decide it in OT? We'll know uh, in a few minutes. There's uh, Smith trying to get around Wheatley. It's right on the goal line. Somehow keeps it in, and Florida Tech takes it away. High ball, header by Nichols. Now Roisland trying to get it upfield, does so. It's uh, uh, Marcos back in the game. Marcos was hurt earlier. Looks like he's uh, back okay. All right, with it, Nichols taken away uh, only briefly by Wheatley, and it comes to uh, Soler. 2.10 to go. Chip toward the net. Headed out by Florida Tech. McCall trying to get the transition going. Comes up to midfield. And now Marcos with it. Left side. That's uh, Demiru. And... Loose ball near the goal line and went over the goal line and Florida Tech's going to get a corner kick and Campanini is going to take it. So I'm not really sure how that happened. It seemed like Marcos got the ball in a great area, but he had no one to pass it. No uh, center forward to try and find. I guess he's the center forward. Mm -hmm. But you would like a late run into the box there from an attacking midfielder or a winger. Try and give, uh, try and give Marcos a little bit of support when he gets in that dangerous area. So Luca Campanini with the corner kick is announced by his dad, Bino, on the far side. 105 to go. In regulation, tied at two, sent toward the net. 
Comes back out. <laughs> I think Bino was reacting on the PA on that. <laughs> 55 seconds to go. Sent toward the net. 18-yard box inside. Olsen header. And Tampa able to clear it out. Shy of midfield. Demiru trying to advance it with a head, but taken by the Spartans. Panthers trying to get one more good look at the goal here. We're down at 35 seconds to go. We got a Tampa player down on the field. Boy, it has been a bad year for Tampa with injuries. Again, they had about eight scratches tonight. And, I mean, just it's been a, you know, they had a great year last year, probably because they stayed healthy. This year they have not uh, been healthy. And they still they still stay competitive in every oh, game. I, I mean, they're they're a heck of a team. You know, they if, are, if this uh, if this score holds, this will be I think their seventh overtime game of the season, which is just oh number eight. Excuse oh, me, <laughs> Coach Bush, uh, Coach Bush <laughs> with the correction the there. Us, so it's okay. <laughs> just unbelievable though. Eight. Yeah. yeah hey. Eight. I agree, Coach. <laughs> eight overtime games, maybe. Oh, seven so far, but. Staring down the eighth right now. You know, I don't think Coach Popovich with the Spurs kind of talks to the broadcasters, <laughs> does he? But hey, Coach Bush, class act. That's right. You know, Popovich might yell at the broadcasters for saying something controversial. But <laughs> I don't think he'd engage in conversation. All right, so the Tampa player doesn't look this terribly is, uh, serious, but he's going to go off. And it's Newman, the goal scorer. It looks like. Oh wow. All right, so Newman's going to come off. And let's see, is that 22? <laughs> All right, 22, uh, Eric Roslin is going to check in. This is the first time Roslin has been in. Got a, he's got a nice uh, crew cut. So Roslin checks in. Uh, I've been keeping up with it. I haven't announced it, but uh, Dodgers lead the Brewers 2-1 bomb the third, game uh, seven of the NLCS. So I'll tell you, we got a lot of good stuff going on tonight. Again, <laughs> Panther women's soccer up 2-1 in Tampa. Florida Tech football up 23-21 against West Florida. And, of course, we got this game here, which looks like it might be going to overtime. We're down to 15 seconds to go. Can Florida Tech get one last rush here? Rosary, long pass, but it's intercepted. Down to 10 seconds to go. Left side as Bino Campanini on the PA does the countdown. Five seconds to go. Do you believe in miracles? Oh, <laughs> right on goal. No, no miracle there, and we've got overtime. <laughs> Holy cow. Got to send a check to Al Michaels, I guess, for that comment. How long is overtime? 15, yep. So, uh, what was 10 minutes? Is it 15? I believe it's 15. Uh, over, overtime is uh, two 10-minute overtime. Yeah, it should be 10 two, minutes, uh, yeah. two 10 minute periods, and if there's. Hmm. Uh, no winner after those two periods, then it results That's in a tie. A tie yeah. And again, uh, that would be a massive result for Florida Tech because that would guarantee them with a game to spare that they make the conference tournament. Uh, it would it would eliminate Rollins, who is a big rival of Florida Tech, and uh, it would be a very good, positive result. You know, Rollins had a day game against Embry Riddle today. Boy, can you imagine playing 2 o'clock in the afternoon? That was scheduled for 2 o'clock, boy. Well, these lights oh. didn't come in until, I think, 2000 and uh, either 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was 13. Oh, yeah, I remember playing the. Uh, so, the it, oh, we used to cool. always have those. And it was almost like a home field advantage because just nobody could handle the heat. And oh, yeah. you started to get used to it a little bit when you're when you're doing it every week. So we are tied at two. We'll have a brief intermission here for a couple of minutes, and then we will play the first of uh, two 10-minute overtimes. Again, keep in mind, golden goals in effect. So if a goal is scored, that'll be the end of the match. So again, a lot to keep track of tonight. Again, Panther women over in Tampa leading uh, two to one. And football up 23-21 over West Florida. And again, 2-2 two -two tie here. Again, volleyball up in Orlando playing at a crossover tournament. I know they lost uh, yesterday. Hopefully they're doing better today. And again, we're back out here for Rollins on Tuesday. Hmm? And let's see, baseball fans, Dodgers 2, Brewers 1. And it's going to go to the top of the fourth. Brewers jumped out one nothing. Dodgers got a couple of runs. So I am uh, 
Not that I want to be in a hurry to get out of here, but uh, being a baseball fan, I definitely want to catch the end of that game. So we'll be back underway here in a few minutes. Again, a little bit of a break between the overtimes, get the chance for the players to rehydrate. So again, J.C. Marles, Forrest Fagert out here at Rick Stoller Field. Again, we're in the still of the night, not much of a breeze, as is usually the case here, but it's getting a little bit cooler. So Tell you what. It's about a five-minute intermission here? Or? How, how long are the intermissions? No, I yeah. got two thirty. Yeah, the officials need a break too. They're probably yeah. pretty tired. So, so, it, so this I'm is uh, this is Florida yeah. Tech's. Uh, I believe it's Florida Tech's first overtime match uh, on the year. Uh, I'm not, might I, be, yeah. I don't want to be wrong the, about that, but here's the thing. Uh, I don't see any OTs. Yeah, on the yeah. Right. So so they're getting used. It looks like uh, they seem to be the ones in a little more disarray on the sideline as opposed to the Tampa people who you know this is their eighth of the year. So this is standard operating procedure for them. Well, I'll tell you, Tampa, their first three games that went into overtime, went into double overtime, they're all ties. 0-0 West Florida, 4-4 North Georgia, 1-1 Clayton State. They lost to Palm Beach Atlantic 2-1 in a single overtime. They lost to Barry in a single overtime 4-3. They beat Embry-Riddle a couple of games ago, double overtime 3-2, and then they lost to Lynn in a single overtime 3-2, so... Again, they only have two wins uh, total, and one of them was the double overtime win over Embry-Riddle. Otherwise, uh, overtime has not been kind to them. That's right, and I've been really impressed with uh, Coach Bush's team at, uh, for the Spartans. They've they're shown that uh, they're a really solid team. Their record, you know, uh, Bill Parcells always says you are what your record says you are. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is. <laughs> this is not a two and seven team. They are, right, yeah, yeah. or two seven and two, or whatever it is. Uh, they have a lot of talent. They play hard all game. They got great goalkeeper. They got good forwards. Uh, they've just had a lot of unlucky bounces, I'm sure. Well, again, this is why in soccer you need what 30, 35 players maybe on a roster. Yeah, you never know when you get out of injuries. That's right. Yeah, and, and it's again, hard. Tampa's got great depth. I mean, they they got some good players. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting game for sure. Uh, let's see. Wheatley is right in front of us. It goes to deciding who's going to kick off here. And that's um, that's actually Richards, the goalie, taking part in this uh, discussion. Yeah, again, golden goal is in effect. Otherwise, we could be here at about 10 or 10.30, which I know my good friend Joe wouldn't mind. He's got nothing to do in his life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. he got nothing going on. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Hey, engineering. I'll tell you, what a great major. <laughs> you, you must be a very smart guy, Joe. All right. So, Tampa starting to come out to the field. Florida Tech getting some last words of wisdom from... Uh, and their head coach, Robin Chan, who, of course, is a Florida Tech grad and, of course, part of the uh, national championship time with Florida Tech, which is the late 80s, early 90s. And again, Robin, you know, just looking back, again, his first five years were difficult, all under 500. Seven of the last eight years, though, winning seasons, and Florida Tech's already clinched a winning season this year, so that's going to be eight out of nine winning seasons after five years of uh, being under 500, so... You know, it kind of took a little while for Robin to get the program going, but always competitive, and we'll have to see how this year, you know, pans out. And one of the most impressive things about the team this year is uh, someone who I think is uh, possibly the best player in the conference, Brandon Smalley, hasn't played a single game uh, yeah, through Smalley's injury. Yeah, some injury problems. Yeah, yeah and he is, he is really an outstanding player, and... Uh, the way that uh, Nag and Guillermo Marcos and Hugo Lopez and those guys have uh, been able to step up and provide the goal scoring and uh, opportunity creating moments 
that Smalley hasn't been able to provide this year due to injury. It's been really impressive. Let's see, Smalley. Well, he's a junior, so he's got at least one year. Maybe he'll have two years of eligibility down. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work, but he's got at least one more year where I assume he'll come back next year I, and hopefully healthy. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would guess uh, he would get a, some kind of – he he has a regular red shirt that he could use. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't want to use your medical red shirt if you didn't need to. So right. I would imagine if he doesn't start playing soon, they're just going to red shirt him. Mm. All right, we're underway again. Golden goal wins. Florida Tech with their first possession of this overtime period. Up ahead of the Rosary, and that almost connected from McCall, but Richard snuffed it out. That could have been a very, uh, very early exit for the evening, but Florida Tech just missing on that one. So Tampa with the ball. Again, if the Panthers have to settle for a tie here, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They'll, uh, they'll clinch a spot officially in the tournament, but again, they want to get a first round home playoff game and for that to happen they got to finish either third or fourth where three would play six four would play five as far as the seeding for that first round of the tournament so still a lot at stake here for Florida Tech they obviously would like to get the win ball out of bounds so Tampa throwing again Tampa's already been eliminated from any uh, postseason play after again uh, making it to the first round last year where they lost to uh, West Alabama Comes over the right side. Tampa trying to advance it. Florida Tech on defense, and this one's going to come right in front of Robert Chan, taken by uh, Rosary. Rosary and Nag trying to run the field. Here's Rosary. Rosary trying to make an inside move, and a nice takeaway by Tampa. Comes to uh, Becker. Goes far side of the field. So we're not quite two minutes into this first overtime period. Again, we are tied at two and got another Tampa player down. Foul Florida Tech. Tampa player getting up slowly, but he is up. So both teams have been up the field at least once. And now Tampa will, uh, <laughs> Tampa will have a kick here. Okay, there it is. Tampa will have a kick here. Good, good 40 yards out. One person wall. That's McCall. <laughs> Sent top of the 18 yard box. Headed out by Florida Tech. Let's see. This one might go out. And it will. Rosary was. Uh, not Rosary. Wait a minute. 14. That's uh, Danny Berrios checked oh, in Barrios, for overtime okay. to get his first action. A very experienced player for Robin Chan. Oh, Berrios is 5'8. He's got two inches on Rosary. So. Far away, I might confuse those two. So actually, Barrios in for the first time. Loose ball, and Florida Tech sends a high ball. That's high in the sky. Nag heads it up for uh, Rosary, who barely keeps it in. Nag is running toward the net. Rosary inside move. Can he maintain control of the ball? Gets shoved to the ground, and nothing is called. And the Panther bench is beside themselves. I tell you what, there was a 1v1 opportunity there with Rosary. Uh, and uh, number three, Hovit, and Rosary just needs to take the ball down the line and use his pace there instead of trying to cut onto his right foot. Mm. Rosary touch pass. There's a shot, but it's deflected by Tampa. Comes out to midfield. McCall goes far side. <coughs> and Tampa should be able to clear the field here. They get it up to midfield, trying to connect with Becker. Becker trying to split Barrios, but Barrios with a nice takeaway. Barrios goes the other way. He has Nag ahead of the field. Left side, Rosary. Ball didn't quite get there. Rosary, though, gets it back for uh, McCall. McCall at midfield. 6.08 to go, and let's see what we got here. <laughs> what, do we have an injury? Oh, we got an injury. All right. It looks like an injury for uh, a striker for mm -hmm. Tampa. Um... Number seven, uh, Julius uh, Becker, it Julius looks Becker, like. Julius Becker, yeah. And he's been all over the place for Tampa. And, you know, once you get into the you know, 94th minute, uh, which is where we are right now, you know, uh, these types of muscle strains and cramps oh, yeah, start to happen. It looks like he just signaled to the uh, Coach Bush that this is a an injury that isn't a cramp that he'll be able to recover from. It'll need a... Uh, 
a substitution. You know, this reminds me, I think the last time I played soccer was in o Oviedo, Spain, in 1982 when I was with UCF on a summer academic trip, and I took classes over there, and we stayed in a dormitory in Oviedo, Spain. We had a soccer game one day, and <laughs> I'll tell you, after five minutes, I think I was out of breath. Oh, yeah. I just wasn't in shape. Five minutes, good for you. I and, would. And then back in high school, <laughs> the Spanish club and the French club would play like an annual game of soccer, and I just did not have the stamina. So yeah. So I, I really admire our players and the Tampa players mm -hmm. and all players who play soccer. It's you really have a have to have a lot of stamina to play. All right, Coach Bush uh, frantically uh, telling his player to get in here. Uh, Twenty-two uh, Rosslyn's going to check in, and Becker is going to check out. And Coach uh, Bush showing concern for his players, he, as you would expect any coach to. I think this is uh, Rosslyn's first action. Is that right? Uh, he checked in earlier. Oh, did he? Okay. But right. he hasn't played Apologies much. Apologies there. He hasn't played much tonight. So, But, yeah, yeah second time he's checked mm. in. All right, sent up to Nag. Nag being grabbed at. There's a shot, but it goes well wide. Goes oh, over man. the wall, heading toward our concession stand. He, he saw stars there. He wanted uh, he wanted a new video uh, goal for the highlight video. Mm. And... Uh, it's always tough there from about 35 yards out to hit one in. All right, sent up over the midfield line. Battle going on. I believe that's Roycelin. And over the field, and uh, Tampa's could have the possession here. So we got 518 to go. Again, if we get nothing decided in the first overtime, we'll just wind the clock back to 10 minutes and try again. But again, we could uh, have a tie if uh, nobody scores. McCall clears it up to midfield for the Panthers. Pass sent by Walker to the far side. Spartans trying to get unleashed here. There's a pass. There's a shot, but it goes wide. So Tampa creating something out of nothing, and uh, we're going to get a corner kick. Yeah, it looked like a deflection off Eichlin on the last-ditch tackle. Uh, I tell you what, Travis Foster's dribbling for Tampa. The past 45 minutes or so has been really great. He had a few in the second half where he dribbled and beat about four people, and he almost won the game there from Tampa, creating that opportunity for uh, it looked like Fernandez. So we've been ra I've been raving a lot about Smith, but you're talking about Walker too. So. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, or uh, Foster, Foster. Yeah, Foster, and uh huh. And I've, but been, I've been impressed with Smith. Smith, Smith sure. has been great also. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure why he's not in right now, but uh, yeah, Coach yeah. Bush, you know, surely knows what he's doing. All right, corner kick for Tampa. They kind of overshoot the net. Top of the 18-yard box. Nag is trying to get it out. Tampa will control near side of the right. Good 30 yards out from net. Tamiru with a diving header but can't get it out. Oh, nice move there by uh, Soler. Sent toward the net. That's wide. Header there, but it went wide. And Fesquay will get a goal kick. Look, looks like Fernandez on the header. And it was uh, a good work from Soler to whip a ball in with his weaker right foot. And it was a good delivery. Uh, Fernandez just couldn't direct it on the goal, and if he did, I think uh, it wouldn't have had quite enough power to trouble Fesque. F Fesque with a goal kick, kicks it off the grass, pretty high in the air. Overshoots Berrios, who went up for the header, taken by Walker. Now it goes far side. Tampa with the ball. They drop it back to midfield. Top of the 18-yard box. Hit up in the air by Nag. McCall going up for a header. Tamiru with a high kick. And they play on. I think Nag might have been looking for a foul, but not called. Far side, we got 2.55 to go. As the big guy, Solomon Wheatley, is going to uh, check back in. So he is, he is well put together. He could be a linebacker for Steve Engelhardt, I think. Try and get an update on Panther football here in a minute. Far side, Tampa with the ball, 2.35 to go. Again, we're in the first overtime period. We are tied at two. Tampa trying to get a shot off. They do, and a save by Fesque. That was on goal. And Fesque with a punt, trying to get it up for Rosary. Headed, though, by Constantine. And this one is going to barely stay in. Uh, I guess not. I guess it was out. Yep. The lineman uh, put his flag up really quickly there. Who else? Hugo. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. 
So two minutes to go, and we got Lopez and Wheatley <clears throat> who we're going to check in, and uh, Rosary's going out, and Nag is going out. So interesting decision by Robin Chan. That's right. Tech, taking the, uh, one of the top scorers in the conference and top on your team, but... Uh, well, maybe he's anticipating another overtime. Maybe he wants to get him a quick break. Mm. All right, sent toward the net. Top of the 18-yard box. Didn't quite get there. McCall heads it to... Uh, Barrios comes on goal, and Richards with a diving uh, stop, and we got a Panther player down. Uh, I don't know if those two collided. In fact, we got a Tampa player shaken up and a Panther player shaken up. We play on for now. As uh, the Panthers are one player short, player down at the other end. Here's uh, Roslin trying to slip a pass in. There's a shot, and it goes outside the net. And the Panther player was hurt is uh, jogging up. Who is that? That's uh, Lopez. Lopez went down. It looked like he landed hard on his hip. Uh, but another great opportunity there for Tampa. So I think Fernandez, you know, he's knocking on the door right now for, for the Spartans. And uh, unless the, one of the three center backs can start to get him under control for Florida Tech, it's going gonna, it's gonna to not end well for the Panthers. Om God Salah has checked back in for Tampa. We're down to 25 seconds to go. Uh, this must be a corner kick. It's out of my view. But All right, sent in. It's uh, taken out by Florida Tech, but uh, Salah with it. Down to 15 seconds to go. And we got a foul on Salah, I guess. 10 seconds to go. Wheatley, I think, is just going to let the time run out. We're down to five seconds to go. And we're going to go to another overtime period. So one 10-minute overtime does not decide it. We'll see if a second 10-minute overtime will decide things. If not, then uh, each team will have a tie. That's right. I think we're in another uh, five-minute intermission here. Is for it that long, the second one? I, I believe wow, so, yeah. Great. All right. <laughs> well, time for the players to get hydrated, and we'll uh, be back here in a minute for the second overtime period. So, again... This is the eighth overtime period, I guess, for Tampa on the eighth. Air. Eighth and one Florida this season. Tech, their first. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. So that tells you that Tampa's done a lot more running than Florida Tech this year. Oh yeah. So again, both teams will rehydrate, and we'll see if by the end of the evening we have any sort of a result. Uh, baseball fans, good one going on. Game 7 NLCS, Dodgers 2, Brewers 1 going to the top of the 5th. And how's football doing? We're up 30-21. to 21. Oh, 30-21, Florida Tech football trying to pull off what would probably be labeled as an upset to West Florida. Panthers have never defeated West Florida. They've lost both of the previous uh, outings. And that is up in Pensacola. Again, they were late getting started due to weather problems. And the Panther women? They won 2-1. I told you that Oh, you did? I already forgot. Okay. <laughs> That's what happens when you get older. You forget things. <laughs> yeah. uh, they won on a Muna, uh, Maria Munoz PK. All right, Maria Munoz with a winning PK. And the Florida Tech women picking up a nice win on the road. 2-1. to one. The uh, women are in a little worse shape than the men. They really have to keep winning. There's no guarantee that they're going to make the tournament. But if they should defeat Rollins on the road... Tuesday. Hopefully that'll be enough to bump them up to at least number six. And again, the Panther men hoping to get up maybe to third or fourth and get that first round home game next week. They're just not going to quite have enough to catch Lynn or Palm Beach Atlantic. In fact, it looks like those two teams are going to get the first round buys. It's just a matter of who's going to win the conference. They are uh, neck and neck right now, tied with uh, 21 points coming into tonight. All right, so second overtime is underway, tied at two. Long ball by Campanini, trying to find Wheatley, but it comes to Richards in the uh, net for Tampa. Again, it's an interesting lineup right now for Florida Tech because they don't have any natural strikers on the field. Mm. All right, in traffic, that's uh, Lopez, gets to Campanini, trying to slip it through to Lopez, but uh, intercepted by the Spartans. All right, sent up the other way. That's uh, That was Eichlin who slowed up the Tampa pass. 
And now McCall has it. Goes far right side, Wheatley. McCall, long pass up, looking for Wheatley. Wheatley trying to make a move, trying to cross it. Sends to the other side, it's Gautier. Shot, save. Oh, a bullet by Gautier. Great save by Richards. That could have been the winner. And now Gautier gets it back. <laughs> Boy, Bino Campanini getting, uh, getting emotional in the PA. I think he thought that was the winner too. All right, Tampa has it. 8.42 to go in the game. Up ahead, oh, Fesquay comes out and smothers the ball. Yeah, it looks like Coach Bush put uh, Smith back into the game for the – Roger Smith back in for the Spartans. Yeah, I would put Smith in if you're Tampa. I mean, oh, yeah. He's, he's something to watch. Oh, he almost connected with him right there, yeah. so I think uh, I think you're right. 20. And this one is going to go over the goal line. It's going to be a goal kick for uh, Richards. So, yeah, again, Tampa, 2-7-3 and three on the year, but you would never know it. Again, a bunch of injuries and not the year that Coach Bush was uh, – Hoping for uh, Robbie Madden. Yeah, Robbie Madden just time. ticked in for uh, Gautier. And then really tough time to check in for the first time of the game with eight minutes remaining in the well, second overtime. Legs, but other than that, yeah. time to get adjusted to the pace of play. Exactly, might be, yeah. Might be a little problem. But, well, Robbie's a veteran. He's mm -hmm. been here for a few years. And I think Gautier needed a, a spell. I think he had gassed himself on that last well, Gautier, effort. What a, what a spark. He almost won the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Gautier comes out, Madden in, ball out of bounds, and Tampa throw in just over the midfield line, 7.35 to go. So, well, again, we've got one good news, the Panther women winning over in Tampa 2-1. Uh, football in a big battle with West Florida to be determined, and again, this to be determined as well, tied at two. Just another fun-filled sports evening on the Panther landscape. All right, Tampa up over the midfield line. Sent to the left side. This is Nichols. Nichols pass, top of the 18-yard box. With it is uh, Fernandez. Fernandez, who scored the first goal for Tampa way back in the uh, first half. Here's a pass, knocked down. Barrios trying to get to it, slips it to his teammate. Now up for Wheatley. Wheatley in a crowd, gets it back to um, uh, DeMiro. And now Wheatley trying to make a move. Wheatley running it up. Getting some oohs and ahs from the Panther crowd. And Tampa takes it away. Campanini trying to steal it. And uh, foul, I believe, on Campanini. Tell you what, when Florida Tech, Florida Tech wants to go right now, but they got to be careful and stay balanced in their midfield because right there, Luca Campanini was up, Danny Barrios was up, and Craig McCall were up. So if Tampa wins that ball and they counter quickly, they have all kinds of time and space. Mm. Got exactly six minutes to go, and again, this will be the final period. Will you either have a tie or a winner in 5:53? Now, well, Nag is going to come in with Rosary on the next uh, dead ball. How about, how about Nag and Rosary next to each other? <laughs> That's really, uh, we should get a picture of that. That's right. That's really something. Again, the long and the short of life. All right, uh, throw in for Tampa, far side. And this one's going to go back. Out of bounds. Uh, again, not to dwell on this, but again, Nag at 6'6", six, six, and Rosary at 5'6". <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a foot on him. <laughs> yeah, both both guys play with a lot of heart, though, I'll tell you that. All right, Tampa with it. This is uh, Soler, sends it left side to Smith, going one-on-one -on -one against McCall. Or not McCall, that's Madden. Sent toward the net. Oh, that was... Went right through the crease. Wow. Nobody there for Tampa to try and blast it in. Another fantastic play, though, from Ro Roger Smith, though. He is really he is really a handful for, for the Panthers. All right, so we got Nag and Rosary back in for Florida Tech. And Wheatley's going to come out and... Wheatley and Lopez, Wheatley it looks and Lopez, like, okay. yeah. So 4.32 to go. Again, bear in mind, Florida Tech gets a point. They guarantee themselves a bid in the conference tournament. So 
you just don't want to get caught up. That would be a worst-case scenario for Florida Tech. Is it fair to say, I mean, this has been a pretty evenly played game? I mean, uh, not only score, but just territory, chances? I, mean, I, I would definitely say that, yeah. So, I mean, you know, maybe each team deserves a tie. You know, you hate to see one of these teams lose with all this effort. Here come the Panthers. And this one goes over the goal line, and this will be a goal kick for uh, Richards. Uh, great defending there by uh, Biza. As uh, it's not often that Paris Rosary gets matched stride for stride, and I think Biza just did that. So really good defending for the Spartan. Well, Coach Moon, who's been with Robin Chan, I believe, for eight years, uh, talking to Eggwes, who's going to check in. Three thirty-three to go. All right, Tamiru sends it back. Comes back over the midfield line. And Florida Tech trying to get over the midfield line, and this one is going to go out of bounds. So is uh, Panther football in trouble? So West Florida just scored, and then they just recovered the onside kick. So they're down by two with the half. Oh, we're, we're down by two. No, we're up by two. West Florida has the ball with a minute left. Oh, wow. Florida Tech football coming down to the wire, up by two. West Florida's got the ball late. We'll, we'll monitor that. Boy, what an evening of sports. Let's to keep up with there. All right, so 2.45 to go. Florida Tech sends a long ball in. There's a header. Where'd it go? Oh, it went wider than that. Oh, that almost went in. Oh, my goodness gracious. It was a free header for Stian Olsen, oh. the freshman of the year in the conference last year for the Panthers. And he just can't redirect it on goal. But it, it, you just couldn't tell until it had passed the post whether or not it was going in from I, where I we're sitting. Tell until very last oh, minute, my so. goodness. That was almost it for the Panthers. Unfortunately, you'll see that in his sleep tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, those are the breaks of the game. All right, 2.22 to go. And, again, I think both teams are certainly worthy of a tie, and you'd hate to have one of these two teams lose. I mean, both teams have played hard, pretty even play. Score tied at two. Here's uh, Walker, double teamed. Gets it back to um, uh, Soler, and it goes out of bounds. So we've got two minutes to go, and Eggwes will finally get the chance to check in. So, again, Eggwes is not a guy who's played a lot tonight, but he has played a little bit. Uh, Berrios is going to go out. Nag with a header, trying to advance it to Rosary. And now Nag making a run. Tampa player getting back. Nag has it far side. It's still in, in play. And it comes back. Here's a cross. There's a header, and it goes wide, and we got... Boy, we got two players down, one for each team. Looked like when the ball had gone away, Nag and the defender, I can't quite see through the Florida Tech bench yeah. which player it was, but got tangled up a little bit as Robbie Russell had whipped the ball into the box. Not sure what the assistant referee is calling here. It looks like it's going to be a free kick for Florida Tech as all this... All the big center backs, the, the towers, are getting forward for Florida Tech, trying to get this last-ditch effort. But I tell you what, it's really important here that Florida Tech keeps balance with their center midfielders and doesn't allow for the counter the, the classic counterpunch for Tampa. A uh, Tampa player trying to get up, and the official giving him all the time in the world, which is fine. I mean... You know, player's health always has to come first. I'm not sure what... If, if he's got a head injury, then... He's not allowed to oh, got a yellow call. stay on. What's that about? Well, I think there was a little tangle up after oh. the play. The assistant referee signaled to the center referee. Is that uh, Newman? Uh, no, that is number oh. three, Ho oh, Hovet, three. I think. Oh, yeah, it looks like Hovet over there. Name. Hovet, yeah. All right, I guess Hovet just got a yellow card. All right, well, Campanini with a kick here, 130 to go. Modest two-person wall for the Spartans. So let's see if Campanini tries to go through the wall or over the wall. Maybe set up his teammate for a header. Players milling around, Nag getting pushed around a little bit. And Nag uh, spouting his opinion to the official saying, hey, I'm getting roughed up here. Well, again, per Henrik, you're too tall. You are going to get roughed up. You're a big guy. All right, here's Campanini. Sends it. Deflected out. McCall, though, will settle it. 
or actually not McCall. Uh, uh, it, it squirted out to okay. Guez there. And, uh, again, like you said, he hasn't been in involved too much today. So uh, at that moment, he didn't have his uh, shooting boots on, it looks like. Mm. And he just dragged the shot wide and didn't trouble Jake Richards at all. So nothing. So this will be, so be a goal kick for Richards. Under a minute to go and barring something unforeseen here, it looks like we might have a tie. Comes out to midfield. Down to 45 seconds to go. Nichols trying to advance. It does so. Now it comes to uh, Seth right, Smith. Shot. Deflected. Bicycle kick. Oh. Goes over the wall. Wow. It was a good, good try. Uh, I'll tell you what. There will be a big exhale on the Panther bench because when he was shaping up for another bicycle kick, uh, drew flashbacks to the second goal of the match here for Tampa. Well, Florida Tech has 20 seconds. Can Fesque boom this ball up the field enough where Florida Tech can make a run? And, and you he's hear, taking his time. You hear Coach Moon saying, relax. All they need is a point to qualify. So so sent up to midfield. Nag with a header. Here's Rosary, but it goes too far, and that is going to be it. So I think a well-deserved result for both teams, a 2-2 tie. So, again, uh, Florida Tech trailed 1-0, tied it up at 1 Led 2-1, but Tampa got the last goal of this game in the second half to tie it at 2. And I thought maybe we'd have a uh, winner tonight, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, two overtimes, 20 minutes, no more goals, and we end up tied at 2. So, again, uh, Florida Tech with the win. They're officially in the tournament in some capacity, right? That's right. Yeah, and that's, that was the job, and they got the job done today. Now they can go into the game against Rollins. They can get some players healthy if they need to. They can uh, they can go for the win, try and go in with some momentum. Uh, Coach Chan and Coach Moon have options uh, with the result that they got today, which is a big, big thing. So looking at the standings here, so Florida Tech would pick up one point for the tie. They've got 16. Uh, Barry's got 16, but Barry is probably playing tonight. So if Barry gets a tie, they'll keep ahead of Florida Tech. So Florida Tech, I mean, it looks like they will have to beat Rollins to have a chance yeah. at either third or fourth place and get that first round uh, game. So, so that uh, that Rollins game will definitely, you know, it always means a lot when you play Rollins, but it's going to mean a lot as far as uh, Florida Tech and their positioning in the tournament. Because I mean, you know, you, know, you don't want to go on the road if you can help it for a first round game. It just makes it tougher. Oh, that makes it much tougher. But uh, but it's just a great thing that. They can either go for the win and potentially uh, get a home game, yeah. or if they don't want to do that, they can rest some players and be extra fresh for when the tournament starts. Yeah. So who knows? What, I mean, I'm not inside their head, inside Coach Chan and Coach Moon's head, but they can do what they want. So that's that's what you want as a coach at this point. Yeah. All right. So again, kind of wrapping up the sports evening, and again, the Panther women win two one over in Tampa. Here we end up tied at two. Uh, Florida Tech football going down to the final moments. Not quite sure where we're at, but we're... Oh, we won? Yep. Oh, Panther football. Great win for Steve Engelhart. We win by two? Yes. Boy, we win by the narrowest of margins. Two points. Great. Strict sack after the onside kick. Okay, so that'll be a long, happy bus ride back to Melbourne. About eight hours from Pensacola. So great win for Florida Tech football. So a pretty good evening. That's right. Yeah, it was a great game, and it was a good one for the neutrals. There were a lot of opportunities and a lot of goals. Yeah. Well, Forrest, I'll see you Tuesday? That's right. Okay, great right. job. Thank you for your All help. All right, JC. So, again, we end up tied at two, and we are going to sign off for the evening. I'm JC Byrolds for Forrest Fager. Thank you for tuning in to the Florida Tech Sports Network. And, again, we'll be right back out here Tuesday for the rivalry that is Florida Tech and Rollins. So we will talk to you then. 7 o'clock kickoff.